Almighty God, we stand in your holy presence as our Supreme Judge. We humbly beseech you to bless and inspire us, so that what we think, say, and do will be in accordance with your will. Enlighten our minds, strengthen our spirit, and fill our hearts with fraternal love, wisdom, and understanding, so that we can be effective channels of truth, justice, and peace. In our proceedings today, Guide us in the path of righteousness for the fulfillment of your greater glory. Amen. You may now be seated. The public interview of the candidates for the positions of Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, Vice Justice Ardelesa and Vice Justice Carpio, is now open. Your Honours, good morning. Good, mo good morning, everyone. As you have mentioned, this is a continuation of the public panel interview of candidates for the position of Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, Vice the Honourable Francis Hardulesa and the Honourable Antonio Carpio. The panel of interviewers are the following. The Honourable Justice Jose Catral Mendoza, Chairperson, Judicial and Bar Council Executive Committee, and regular member representing the retired members of the Supreme Court. The Honorable Judge Toribio Ilao Jr., regular member representing the private sector. Honorable Justice Noel Jimenez Tiham, regular member representing the Academ. And Honorable Judge Franklin de Monteverde Sr., regular member representing the Integrated Bar of the Philippines. Your Honors, the candidates for interview this morning are the following. Justice Ramon M. Bato Jr., please rise, sir. Thank you. Justice Japar B. Di Maampau. Justice Mario V. Lopez and Justice Ricardo R. Rosario. Your Honours. Good morning. Uh, you will be first interviewed by Judge Oak. De Monteverde. Judge Oak. Sir, Your Honour, may I administer uh, the oath first? Yeah. Right. Administer the oath. Honorable candidates, please rise so that I can administer the oath. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this public panel interview by the Judicial and Bar Council? So help you God. You may now be seated. Your Honor. Thank you, Justice Mendoza. I'll start first with uh, Justice Bato. You look different now, Justice. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I don't know if you still can recall I appeared before you in Vice City in the late 80s. You were then the RTC judge there. Uh, sorry, Your Honor, uh, I was not appointed in uh, Baez City. Yeah, but, but, but you were there. I was appointed RTC judge of uh, Dumaguete City, Branch 30. But it was in Baez City that I, I, probably you were just an act or concurrent or acting capacity there. Well, uh, sorry, Your Honor, I could not uh, uh, recall. Uh, okay. Just the same, I'll go straight to the point. You have a pending case, administrative case. Uh, tell us about it. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, that uh, administrative uh, case is an offshoot of the uh, 
issuance of a preliminary injunction I uh, issued in connection with the uh, case of uh, Governor uh, Taliado. We issued the injunction because at the time the condemnation doctrine was uh, still uh, a good uh, law. Meaning, uh, at that time, if an elected uh, public official was re-elected in an election and he has a pending administrative uh, case, then following the doctrine of uh, condemnation, it is uh, extinguished, Your Honor. Besides, uh, we also take into account the existence of, uh, or the absence of uh, substantial evidence, Your Honor. This was filed sometime in 2017? Yes, Your Honor. And still, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pending with uh, OCA. Am uh, I correct? Yes, Your Honor. It's still uh, pending with the Supreme Court. Uh, it's now the Supreme Court. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. As to your health, uh, I can see that you are quite healthy, except for the lymphocytes, which was high when you had the complete blood count taken uh, sometime in May of 2000 this year. Let's go to Justice Dimampa. You have been, how many years have you been with the Court of Appeals? 15 years, Your Honor. 15 years, and uh, can we have a, a figure as to your caseload? Uh, based on the uh, document uh, issued by the uh, statistics, of re recording statistics division of the Court of Appeals, have only uh, 34 cases submitted for decision. Uh -huh. How many times have you been nominated or? Based on no. my recollection, Your Honor, I, I was shortlisted nine times, Your Honor. Nine times. And would you think that Today is your lucky day? I am uh, optimistic, Your Honor. Though uh, I always believe that the Almighty God is the best ultimate uh, disposer of affairs. Now, uh as to your nomination, there is an opposition here by a concerned citizen. Can you tell us yes, about it? Uh, that uh, case, uh, are you referring to the opposition filed by uh, uh, Attorney Maliari? No, no. This was sometime in 2009, many years ago, 10 years ago, but still appearing on your record. I, I, as far as I can recall, there were uh, two, but all these cases were dismissed by the Supreme Court. Uh, the, the one uh, filed by uh, uh, this uh, Jose Marisol uh, was uh, declared, uh, was uh, dismissed by the Supreme Court. In fact, uh, by virtue of the in-bank resolution dated July 2, 2019, the court declared the case closed and terminated. In regard to the opposition filed by Attorney Maliari, I uh, am just one of the six justices, and in the resolution of the Supreme Court dated February 21, 2017, uh, the complaint was dismissed. Uh, the court said, 
uh, that the case is unfounded. In fact, Attorney Maliari was ordered, was uh, ordered to explain why it should not be administratively sanctioned for filing such unfounded suits. Okay, thank you. How about this opposition from a certain uh, Jose Maria Mirasol? That, that's the one that I, uh, you just uh, mentioned. Uh, that I uh, referred to. Uh -huh. uh, it was, uh, there was this resolution of the Supreme Court that uh, July 2, 2019, declaring the case closed and terminated. Okay, okay thank you. <coughs> Justice Lopez. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. There is a case here, IPI number 17-256-CA-J. Is this still pending? Uh, what is the title, Your Honor? Uh, uh, this was filed by a certain Norberto Villamin and Edgardo Balse. Uh, that is the... the For grave abuse of discretion. I think uh, that's still pending, Your Honor. This is a case, uh, the Ponencia was uh, then uh, Associate Justice Karandang, who is now with the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And I am one of the senior members who concurred with that uh, decision. And this uh, administrative case, Your Honor, is purely judicial. It is a question of law. And uh, they are uh, claiming that our judgment is wrong, but... Uh, they filed the administrative case. But it's still pending. Huh? Yes, Your mm -hmm. Honor. Although uh, Associate Justice Karandang, by reason mm -hmm. of her appointment, uh, she was already excluded from that case mm -hmm. uh, since uh, she is already subject to impeachment. Okay. Now, are you aware of an opposition filed by Attorney Sabino Padilla, Jr. Well, th that is a perennial uh, position, Your Honor, and uh -huh. I had already submitted to the uh, JBC uh -huh. uh, an explanation. Again, this is also a judicial matter, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Sometime, sometime in uh, February of this year, you had a blood chemistry taken and it shows that uh, the your cholesterol is quite high then the the complete blood count shows that uh, your RBC and RDW are both high uh, yeah, are you feeling well of course your <laughs> honor <laughs> okay why uh, the, 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 it's not a super high your honor in the sense uh, that it okay. is over and above the the uh, normal but it's just a uh, within the uh, uh, average for uh, senior citizens you are honor. taking any medicine I have uh, a preventive uh, maintenance your honor uh, 2.5 milligrams uh, just to maintain the uh, hypertension Okay. Justice Rosario? Good morning, yeah, morning. How's your health? So, I'm sorry. Very high. Yes, uh, yeah, uh. very high. And um, the doctor already prescribed um, medicine, medicine to put it in um, under control, Your Honor. Okay. You always uh, have this. Uh, mm. I, I try to avoid the foods, uh, spicy ones. Y yes, and uh, yes, um, mm. based on the advice of my doctor, Your Honor. Okay, I was going over your records and all of the cases against you have been uh, dismissed. This yes, is yeah. your fourth time to be nominated? 
for the for uh, I was uh, uh, nominated. Yes, I was only uh, shortlisted and nom nominated once, Your Honor. This is my uh, third ah. or fourth application. Ah, only once? Oh yes, yeah, yes, Your Honor. That's correct. But it shows here that uh, there are three nominations. The um, first one was in 2004. Uh, my nomination was, if I recall it, uh, uh, right, Your Honor, it was for the uh, position vacated by uh, uh, Justice uh, Del Castillo, Your Honor. I'm not really sure. Okay, Justice Bato? Honor. Uh, during your previous interview with the JBC, you somehow expressed support for the same sex marriage. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. The Supreme Court just last week dismissed the petition to allow same sex marriage in the <coughs> Philippines. Now, if given a chance to write a dissenting opinion about it, what will be the content? Uh, I will still uh, focus my dissent on the equal uh, protection clause of the uh, Constitution, Your Honor. This is because uh, there, for me, there is no valid uh, classification between uh, same-sex uh, marriage, if uh, it would be allowed, and a heterosexual uh, couple, Your Honor. Besides, the uh, marriage should not be, uh, besides, the purpose of marriage should not be uh, procreation only, Your Honor, because there are certain uh, rights that a married couple are entitled to and which are being deprived if you are a not a heterosexual uh, couple, like successional rights, the rights to be named as a beneficiary, so far as the GSIS and uh, government service insurance systems uh, is uh, concerned, Your Honor. And so this should be, uh, they are being discriminated against because we do not allow same-sex uh, marriage, Your Honor. So, uh, a marriage between two persons of the same sex can be had, not only for procreation, but also for uh, sexual pleasure. Is that what you are driving at? Yes, Your Honor, because uh, we have also present practices now. We have uh, so-called surrogate ma mothers where the egg or the sperm could be uh, fertilized and it could be uh, processed and a surrogate mother would be responsible for nine months and after it is uh, being uh, born then you have uh, children either for the uh, for the same-sex uh, couple, Your Honor. Now, you have two children who are w working with your office. How does it help you that you are working with your own kids? Well, it helps me in a sense that I have full trust and confidence in my uh, children, Your Honor, when it comes to uh, the work the uh, perform in uh, the office. My youngest uh, son is a lawyer. So, although he is not occupying a lawyer position, but an executive uh, position, he helps me in the research, Your Honor. And your eldest son? My eldest son is a uh, computer, Your Honor, graduate, uh, information, uh, technology, and so he helps me also in the work in the uh, Court of Appeals. How is his health? Well, uh, I, I, he 
he is in charge in the uh, transmittal of these uh, confidential uh, decisions, Your Honor, from my office to the offices of the other uh, justices, Your Honor. Now, you were one of the founders of the Supreme Court Assembly of Lawyer Employees, correct? Yes, Your Honor, a co-founder. Uh, when I was still uh, in the Supreme Court. And what do you think was the most remarkable achievement of this organization for the lawyers working here in the Supreme Court? Well, uh, I think it has uh, helped in the sense that uh, all permanent lawyers are being organized. And so you have this uh, fellowship, regular uh, interaction among the uh, lawyers in the Supreme Court. And so they can discuss a lot of uh, issues or uh, matters that are brought to their uh, attention, Your Honor. So intellectually, it helps them, Your Honor. Okay. Now, many of your contenders are from the Court of Appeals. If given a chance to ask one of them anything, who is it and what will be the question? If there is anything that you want to ask from any of the your colleagues in the Court of Appeals, who will be it? Your close confidant. The uh, I think it's uh, Justice uh, Brusilas, Your Honor. Why? Because uh, from time to time we discuss uh, issues. Uh, legal uh, matters, Your Honor, and we, uh, and also, uh, not only legal, but also uh, present situation so far as the uh, Philippines is concerned, and uh, latest uh, jurisprudence, Your Honor. Okay, Justice Dibampao. Yes, Your Honor. You have been pushing for the organization of a Sharia appellate court, and vows to enrich jurisprudence on Sharia law. How will this appellate court differ with the one we have now, aside from its jurisdiction, of course? Uh, Your Honor, um, yeah, there is this supervening event, mm -hmm. and I am referring to the passage of the BARM law, ah. Republic Act 11054, okay. and then under Article 10, uh, Section 2 thereof, there is that. Uh, Appellate uh, High Court. Uh, uh, that Which will, is Appellate High Court. Yes, and it is clearly provided therein that the decisions of the High Court are appealable to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. on uh, issues involving pure questions of law. So uh, there is now a provision uh, in the BARM law which, uh, in effect, supersedes that provision under uh, PD 1003 regarding the family code, uh, the pers Muslim personal code of the Philippines. In but that law, no. it clearly provides uh, that such provision on the appellate court is deemed repealed. That is now the present law on the matter, Your Honor. Ah, okay. Thank you for uh, 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 the information. Okay. What is your position regarding the flip flopping flip flopping issue thrown towards the Supreme Court in some decisions? Your Honor, in, uh, yes, go ahead. May, may I be allowed yeah. to proceed, Your Honor? Okay. Well, well um, as uh, with all humility, as bar uh, lecturer on taxation and commercial law, I. Uh, chance upon decisions of the Supreme Court on taxation which are conflicting. Uh, this may sound to be technical, but I hope the court is aware of this, that this technical issue regarding the application of Section 76 of the NIRC uh, has been the, the subject of two conflicting decisions of the court uh, though it's technical, I am referring to the 
rule regarding uh, option carry over when the, there are taxes uh, paid by a corporation in excess of the withholding tax, uh, a reading of section 76 clearly shows that the taxpayer may either claim for refund or may carry over that. Now, the Supreme Court uh, played flop on this. Uh, previous to the decision on August 1, 2018, I'm referring to the Rombos, Rombos Energy Corporation versus Commissioner. The ruling of the court was uh, an option regarding carryover is irrevocable. Now, the recent decisions shows otherwise, penned by no less than the Chief Justice. So, these are two division decisions of the court. So I explained to the bar examinees, law students, that given that these are two division, these are division decisions, these are applicable. Uh, I remind the, them that uh, a doctrine or principle of law can only be revoked, can only be modified or reversed by the Supreme Court in bank. Up to this date, there is no Supreme Court decision laying down the prevailing doctrine. So uh, I just hope, and if it's God's will that I will be appointed, I propose, I will propose certain amendments to the internal rules of the Supreme Court. Uh, a proposal that will avoid conflicting decisions because the uh, bar examinees Law students are in a quandary. Now, in commercial law, there is also that conflicting decision regarding the application of Section 48 of the Insurance Code regarding, and everybody knows this, the two-year incontestability clause. Uh, in 1989, in the case of Tan versus Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court ruled it's the two-year period that matters. Even if the insured died, that uh, right to rescind be applied. This has been reiterated in 2012 in the case of Florendo versus Pilam, Pilam Plants. But in 2013, in the case of Manila Bankers versus Aban, the Supreme Court has had a different view. Such that for an insurance company to exercise that right to rescind within the two-year period, meaning the insurance company can contest that, the insured must be alive. And that has been the present ruling of the court in the case of uh, Sun Life Assurance versus Sibia on June 15, 2016, that for an insurance company or insured, insurer to, to resent and apply the two-year incontestability clause, the insured must be alive. So two conflicting decisions of the court, and I examined this for, these are all division decisions. So I told them, if this will come out in the bar, though the, the, the any can be considered an acceptable answer, because this, there has yet to be an in bank decision laying down the prevailing rule. So, I, I, it caused a confusion among bar examinees as, 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 as well as bar students. That is my reaction, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. And will you, would you consider those cases as controversial? The, uh, uh, cases that you have handled? The, 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 yeah, the two, two, the two cases that you mentioned. The, I, 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 uh, they are not so controversial. Ah, okay. but and it, what it, is the most controversial case that you have handled? And as, yeah, as a justice. As a justice. Uh, well, uh, 
The first was briefly, ah, briefly. There are two. Oh, the uh, the more controversial between okay, the two. Okay, uh, the one that I penned on October 10, 2006, involving these uh, printed holders, and that's the case of Parents Enabling Parents Coalition versus Pacific Plans. It uh, involved uh, more or less 500 plan holders, and I ruled in their favor. Uh, I have yet to check the case was eventually appealed to the Supreme Court. And still, uh, and it's still pending, okay. Your Honor. Thank you. Now, uh, I was informed that you are an expert in taxation. Uh, well, I not, not wanted so to defer asking you this question, but uh, nonetheless, since you are here already, I will ask this one. With pleasure, Your Honor. Mm. To increase the LGU's revenue collection, amendment to the provisions of the LGU is proposed on the situs of the tax. This will provide for the allocation of the VAT paid by the manufacturers, assemblers, contractors, producers, and exporters to the municipality or city where they are operating instead of paying to the place where the principal office is located. Your thoughts? Your Honor, it's very clear. Uh, that value added tax cannot be imposed by local government units. Mm -hmm. Under Section 133, which is entitled Common Limitation on the Taxing Powers of the Local Government Units, that is, I think, in paragraph H, value added tax cannot be imposed by local government units. It's not within the power of the local government units. Yeah, thank you. Justice Lopez. Yes, Your Honor. Many of your contenders also come from the Court of Appeals. Now, what do you think is your advantage over them? Mm. Sometimes, Your Honor, it is uh, difficult to advertise your own self. But uh, we can only see the differences of one of us from our track records. And uh, I, I will not say that I am better than them, but I have some qualities which are peculiar and unique that are not found from my colleagues. And that is in my PDS, Your Honor, because uh, ever since, uh, I have the obsession to be excellent, Your Honor. And uh, if you will see my PDS, Your Honor, since I was in the grade school, I was already modesty aside, Your Honor. But that's why I, I, as much as possible, I don't want to talk about it. Modesty aside. Okay, anyway, anyway. I was already... Uh, as chairman of the Court of Appeals of the 13th Division. 12th division, division already, Your Honor. What was the most serious case handled in your division, and how did your teamwork with the other justices play in the vital role of decision making? Oh, there are uh, several uh, cases. Uh, the re most recent one, Your Honor, is this uh, Amparo case and that of uh, habeas data case, which uh, was filed by Gabriela. Uh, Kapalaran and uh, mis missionaries and of course uh, we were uh, the subject of uh, the headlines because uh, we decided it against their favor and uh, to us or to us in the uh, division we believe that uh, that action is uh, not proper. They, we denied the uh, writ of Amparo as well as the writ of habeas corpus, uh, writ of habeas data, Your Honor, uh, on grounds of national interest. Okay. You having been in, in service, the Court of Appeals, what do you think is your most, uh, is your best contribution to it? 
Oh, just like uh, Justice Dimampao, I am also engaged in uh, legal education. And uh, when it comes to our expertness, uh, we try to extend our knowledge to our colleague, especially when uh, in my division, for instance, uh, I usually gather my members and uh, usually deliberate on uh, significant issues affecting uh, criminal liabilities, penalties, especially, Your Honor, uh, that uh, many of our judges uh, does not or do not uh, apply appropriately the rules on penalties. And this is one of the things that we uh, correct in our decisions in the Court of Appeals. How about you, Justice uh, Ricky uh, Rosario? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, in your 13 years of service here at the Court of Appeals, what do you think is your more major contribution to it? Uh, I think, Your Honor, um, I would consider the um, attainment of zero backlog uh, docket as uh, a major <coughs> remarkable accomplishment as Justice of the Court of Appeals, Your Honor. Now, speaking of backlog, as of June 30, 2019, you have a caseload of 332, and your average monthly output is at 6, is that correct? I, I suppose so, Your Honor. Um, now, are these figures good to you? Or you, do you intend to at least dispose of more? Yes, Your Honor. Um, uh, that is my commitment uh, to this um, honorable um, body or council, Your Honor. Okay. In your previous interview, you said that after the decision in the co warrant case that removed Sereno, there were fears that credibility of the Supreme Court would be eroded. But now, after more than six months, uh, after uh, months have passed, the perception appeared to have died down. If you were to gauge the Supreme Court's credibility now in general, how is it? Uh, Your Honor, um, the Supreme Court, Your Honor, um, uh, remains to be credible and that their decisions are considered uh, spot on, Your Honor, uh, so that there is no reason for um, the parties or litigants to, you know, um, um, question the uh, manner by which these decisions are made or even the integrity or honor of the incumbent members, Your Honor. How good of a leader, uh, how good is a leader are you? Your Honor, as a leader, Your Honor, um, I subscribe to the uh, principle of um, leadership by example, Your Honor. I try to set uh, the example so that uh, what kind of examples? In terms of... Um, Tardiness or... <laughs> uh, competence and efficiency, Your Honor. Um, doing your uh, level best, Your Honor, in your... Now, in if I were to go around practice. your office and ask one of your staff members to describe you and your whole stint in the CA, what do you think would they say? about you? Your Honor, um, you have uh, just uh, your own personal uh, view on it. Of course, uh, you will not, uh, this will not be self-serving. Just an honest opinion. Well, I guess um, it's, 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 um, it will be um, positive, Your Honor, because I try to the um, you know, diplomatic, um, tactful, and, and nice to my colleagues and even my co-workers, Your Honor. I so try to be fair, Your Honor, and... Uh, so if you were to uh, go to your division and, uh, or to your office punctually, are they following you? Oh, oh yes, Your Honor. Um, that should be the case, Your Honor, because as I said, um, uh, this leadership by uh, uh, leadership is um, uh, quite effective, Your Honor. 
in uh, instilling discipline uh, among my subordinates and fellow court workers. You know. Okay. I'll just uh, ask some basic questions. Yes, okay. I'm sure you you know this. You uh, are you familiar with the General Banking Act of 2000? Especially on foreclosure. Uh, okay. A corporation has a loan with a certain bank and for non-payment of his obligation his uh, uh, property was foreclosed. Now, under the General Banking Act, What is the period of redemption? May I ask uh, Justice Bato? If I can recall it uh, correctly, Your Honor, I, I think it is uh, 90 days from the 60 or 90 days from the consolidation of the uh, title, Your Honor. Do you agree with Justice Bato or uh, Justice Lopez? Uh, seriously, Your Honor, uh, I am recalling the period of redemption, but uh, I would stick to the general rule that I think it's one year, Your Honor, mm -hmm. redemption period. How about you, uh, uh, Justice uh, Rosario? Your Honor, uh, I agree with Justice Bato. Um, if the uh, more KG is a bank, Your Honor, it's three months. Otherwise, um, it's one year, Your Honor, from the registration of, uh, with the register of deeds of the uh, the sale, the certificate of sale, Your Honor. That is the reckoning period, Your Honor. Three months from the auction sale? No, in the case of uh, banks, Your Honor, it's three months. It's shorter, Your Honor, uh, the, uh, the period of redemption. Yeah, Unlike uh, non-bank entities or private individuals, Your Honor. From, from what period? From uh, from the time of uh, the foreclosure, the, the one year period per auction sale of the sheriff. This is non bank or bank. Come uh, on. Let's start with uh, in the case a private bank. A, pri a, a, a private bank, your honor. It's three months, your honor. To uh, be with land bank or the DBP. Um, I'm not sure if there's really a distinction between a private bank okay. and. Uh, but I'm trying to make a distinction between a transaction uh, M32 between a private, uh, a non-bank entity and, individual and a bank uh, yeah. where the bank is the, the creditor or the mortgage or owner. The period to redeem uh, becomes shorter. It's not one year, but three months or the same to be counter record from uh, the uh, um, registration or the mortgage transaction. Your honor. From the registration, I, I suppose so, Your Honor. Of what? The loan. Uh, registration of the loan, or what? the. Uh, I, I suppose the, the 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 sale, Your Honor. Okay. Justice De Mampao? With all humility, Your Honor, it is uh, Section Forty-Seven of Republic Act Eighty-Seven Ninety-One, which is now known as the New General Banking Law. It's clear during uh, it shall be redeemed within three months from the uh, registration of the certificate of foreclosure or for foreclosure whichever comes earlier. But remember, right, that's the language of the law. That's correct. Three months for, for corporations uh, who are borrowers. No? The, uh, the period to redeem is three months from the annotation of the certificate of sale. And what is the amount of redemption in this particular case? Justice Bato? Shall it be the amount bidded at the foreclosure sale or shall be it be the total indebtedness? I think, Your Honor, it's the total indebtedness, the principal plus the interest, penalties, and surcharges. And know. everything? And everything that goes with it? Yes, Your Honor. 
Justice Dima Ampau? Foreclosure, Ralph. Yeah, the amount. Interest, right, yes. Oh. Interest, uh, cost, and hmm. advertisement. That's the uh, rule of thumb, Your Honor. Justice Lopez? I agree, Your Honor. Justice Rosario? Uh, Your Honor, um, yes, I, I also uh, agree, of Your Honor. Uh, but I'm not really sure if uh, I think uh, the the amount of uh, the retention price should be based on what has been agreed upon in the deed of mortgage or between the parties, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. uh, in case of foreclosure. In a string of uh, Supreme Court decisions, it's uh, the total indebtedness. Uh, one of those uh, involved is the case of uh, West Negros College, which is now ESTI, versus the DBP. Okay, what are the grounds for the annulment of judges? Justice the Adi Mampao? Annulment. Uh, annulment of judgment. Oh, it's very clear under Rule 47, uh, lack of uh, jurisdiction, when uh, there is that extrinsic fraud. And uh, lack of jurisdiction, when shall this be filed? In your period, if I remember right, or not, is the prescriptive period. Yeah. How about you, Justice uh, Bato? Four years, Your Honor, is the uh, prescriptive period. For lack for of jurisdiction? For extrinsic uh, fraud, I think, Your Honor. Okay. Four lack years from discovery. Lack of jurisdiction? Lack of jurisdiction over the uh, subject matter, Your Honor. Uh, I think there is no prescriptive uh, period. How about you, Justice Lopez? Uh, those are the grounds, Your Honor. Uh, extrinsic fraud and lack and, of jurisdiction. I know these are basic questions. Huh? Yes, Your Honor. But uh, the, there is a period, within a period of six months from the time the uh, aggrieved party learned about this uh, decision or from the time he has been informed of this uh, uh, judgment which he intend to annul. Justice Rosario? I, I agree with uh, Justice uh, Lopez. Uh, uh, I think um, um, he's trying to make a distinction between um, the general rule, uh, which is the, from the time of, uh, Your Honor, this is prescription, right? Uh, um, uh, the exception would be the, the so-called discovery rule as against uh, uh, the, um, the, 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 the the date, Your Honor, when the um, uh, violation was uh, when the committed, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, extrinsic fraud, uh, the case can be filed within four years from discovery of the fraud. And then lack of jurisdiction should be filed before Estopel or Laches. Such sin. Okay. Now, uh, exiled Communist Party of the Philippines founding chairman, Joma Sison, said that he cannot be arrested by the Interpol because he is a recognized political refugee following the statement of the president that the PNP is now in coordination with Interpol. Is Sison really protected by the Refugee Convention and by the European Convention on Human Rights? Justice Lopez. Uh, based from my uh Readings, Your Honor. Uh, he is one of those uh, refugees who are protected. The reason why we cannot simply uh, arrest him through the intercession of uh, Interpol. And uh, being a protected person under that uh, convention, Your Honor, uh, uh, 
uh, they, they, they are given the uh, rights just like a person who is on asylum, Your Honor. And I would consider him as a person, uh, as a subject to that asylum uh, uh, principle under the international law. And uh, that, that, that uh, personality which they enjoy uh, cannot be derogated by uh, our uh, uh, Philippine authority. Your view on this, uh, Justice Dimapao? I think he can invoke that uh, universal the, uh, covenant on civil and political rights, uh, the right of a person to uh, security or liberty or not. How about you, uh, Justice Rosario? The same um, opinion Your Honor, articulated by Justice Dimampao, um, which um, recognizes, Your Honor, the, the, the right of uh, Jose, jo, um, Mr. C. Senor in this case, in this example that you cited, Your Honor. Your view, Justice Bato? I concur with uh, Justice Lopez, Your Honor. Two versus two. Okay, let's go on another topic. In the recently decided case of G.O. Summer versus the OTC, the Supreme Court, unbanked, declared that as of December 31, 2016, 6,526 new cases were filed in court. Now, together with the reinstated, revived, reopened cases, the court now has a total of 14,491 cases in its docket. And of the new cases, 300 were ruffled to the court and bank and 6,226 to the three divisions of the court. The court and bank disposed of 105 cases by decision or signed resolution, while the divisions of the court disposed of a total of 923 by decision or signed resolutions. Now, in your opinion, what should the Supreme Court do in order to confront this mounting backlog? Justice De Mampang. Your Honor, uh, in that case, the Supreme Court uh, applied the doctrine of hierarchy of courts. Uh, in that decision, uh, the court uh, explained that the doctrine of hierarchy of courts will filter cases. Uh, the court uh, said uh, the doctrine of hierarchy of courts operates, one, to uh, prevent inordinate, inordinate demands on the court's time and attention, which are better devoted to matters within its exclusive jurisdiction. Two, uh, to prevent a further overcrowding of the court's dockets, and three, to prevent inevitable and resulting delay in the adjudication of cases. Based on my reading, the seminal case is the case of People versus Quaresma in 1989, wherein the court mentioned only two. Now here in this case, it added one and that is uh, to uh, prevent inevitable and resulting delay in the adjudication of cases. The court explained uh, cases should be remanded to the lower courts to be, be equipped to resolve uh, factual issues. Uh, hierarchy of courts, uh, doctrine of hierarchy of courts uh, simply dictates that recourse must first be made to a lower rank court exercising concurrent jurisdiction with a higher court. I humbly submit, consistent with that pronouncement of the Supreme Court, that it's the application of the doctrine of hierarchy of courts which will help decongest dockets of the Supreme Court. Justice Rosario, what should the Supreme Court do? Um, Your Honor, uh, I think they should consider uh, um, um, hiring uh, more lawyers, Your Honor, to 
have been doing um, the individual uh, work your honor and the um, uh, to look for uh, the applicable um, uh, jurisprudence and second uh, your honor I partially agree with uh, the position taken by uh, just justice the man your honor uh, that uh, we should observe uh, the principle of hierarchy of courts um, so that uh, the cases, uh, we, uh, the, the courts uh, which um, um, have a concurrent uh, jurisdiction uh, with the uh, Supreme Court, Your Honor, the, 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 the cases should not um, uh, they should not be allowed uh, uh, to reach the Supreme Court uh, without uh, um, uh, being passed upon by the lower courts, Your Honor. And uh, I, I guess uh, there is also a need for uh, a gentle reminder to the justices, Your Honor, to as much as possible uh, mm, strictly comply at all you know, with the constitutional uh, mandate or the period within which uh, uh, the cases submitted for decision should be decided, which I believe is 24 months, Your Honor. Your Honor, Justice Lopez. Uh, the case of Gio Summer is just one of the pronouncements of the Supreme Court to uh, decrease or to um, uh, eliminate unnecessary cases before the Supreme Court because it declares that uh, they are not the trier of facts. Now, this is not the main reason or a remedy to decrease the docket of the Supreme Court. Now, this is just one. Now, uh, if I may, Your Honor, uh, uh, appeal, appeal is a matter of right, uh, certiorari is a matter of discretion under Rule 65. Uh, in cases of appeal, well, it's a matter of right, and uh, uh, most of the time, it is still decided extensively. If I may suggest, Your Honor, if these are a mere reiteration, then simply uh, a, a short resolution uh, to dismiss these cases so as to lessen the, uh, the uh, burden of the Supreme Court. And uh, only those cases uh, which are uh, novel and uh, uh, of new impression that should be decided extensively. And secondly, as regards this interlocutory orders, Your Honor, uh, it reaches the Supreme Court. I would suggest that this interlocutory order should already stop at the uh, Court of Appeals. Anyway, if ever there is any error that uh, will be involved in the uh, resolution of these interlocutory orders, those can still be raised uh, on appeal after the case has been decided. So this is here, uh, Your Honor, a duplicity of uh, deciding these interlocutory orders. Why should we not put at end uh, at, the, uh, at the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court will no longer sustain these uh, issues of interlocutory orders? Uh, and this will not prejudice, as I have said, the, the, the uh, appealants or the petitioners because at any rate, uh, when there is an appeal, that will be taken up again. How about those cases that have been decided and it became final? And, final. and then uh, final? Yes, Your Honor. This in the Supreme Court. And then uh, a lawyer files a motion to revisit the old case. Do you think this is one of the ploy that uh, well, uh, your honor that uh, adds to the clogging of the cases in the Supreme Court? Your honor, uh, we have a universal rule that a case at some point of time should end that should be yes case. because if uh, we will not end then eternally we will be always uh, resolving cases uh, that may also uh, not only disrupt the functioning of the court but also prejudice the parties themselves especially the injured party and the injured party also deserve justice and so be it 
at the risk of some occasional errors as this is also uh, there is no such thing as a perfect decision there is always a risk of occasional errors and uh, perhaps that is something that uh, that we should already uh, take into account if ever if ever but we should accept that it should end and this occasional error should also be uh, accepted okay thank you Justice Bato, do you know of any case that was revisited by somebody? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, there was a case decided just by... Don't, just don't uh, say the case, the title and uh, number of the case. Just. Yes, Your Honor. There was a case uh, decided by the uh, Supreme Court by a division of the Supreme Court. And uh, there was already an entry of judgment. So it's already final and executory. And yet the Supreme Court in bank through a letter of a lawyer entertained the uh, letter decided the case, uh, reviewed the decision of a division, and uh, remanded the case to the Court of Appeals for the reception of uh, evidence. The division, the decision of the division had already become final. Yes, Your Honor, final and executory, and in fact there was entry of judgment. Now, would you consider that as a, one of those that clogs the docket of the Supreme Court? Yes, Your Honor, because the time of the court would now be focused on that particular case, which has already been declared final and uh, executory. And the resources of the court, the, considering that it is the court in bank who will uh, again study the case, would uh, take the time of the uh, court uh, reviewing again a decision of the uh, division. Besides, we have that uh, rule, Your Honor, that uh, a decision of a division is a decision of the court, of the entire court. And so that uh, the court in bank does not exercise uh, appellate jurisdiction. Otherwise, if uh, every decision of a division would be uh, reviewed by the court in bank, then uh, we have a problem, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you. Now my time is almost up. I'll just uh, ask you a few more questions. Yesterday, September 10, the President claimed that he is ready to certify the SOGI Equality Bill as urgent in order to make the LGBTQ plus community happy. What do you think will be the implication of this move by the President, if true? Yes, Justice Lopez. I, I would say, Your Honor, that uh, this is a new law and uh, being a new law, there are some of advantages and it's still disadvantages. A bill. Still a bill. I thought it's certified. It, it because oh, yeah, it is yeah, being it's certified, you know. So there is a there are a lot of there are advantages and disadvantages. And from my reading, Your Honor, there are more questions than answers. Mm -hmm. And because of this, uh, I would uh, rather say that we should take a. Uh, more uh, time and scrutinize further these provisions involving uh, the SOGI law. For instance, Your Honor, please, uh, if we have to adopt this uh, law, it appears that uh, the SOGI or uh, the, the, the protected persons under the SOGI may even violate the Equal Protection Clause. Uh, even the freedom of expression. For instance, in, uh, uh, in uh, freedom of religion, uh, we, have, we, can, we express our, 
uh, faith for or against this third sex. But yet, if you will express your, uh, your uh, belief or faith against or in favor of the soji, then there is a sort of uh, sanction as it will uh, discriminate the third sex. Then from the point of view of practicality, again, uh, providing them with a facilities, a third kind of facilities, so that they could be accommodated because uh, they cannot go to a uh, female or male facilities uh, like a comfort room. So you have to provide again and it will entail some expense of the government. In terms of education, if, in, in, uh, if a certain institution wanted to uh, build or uh, build a, 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 an exclusive school for uh, males or for females, then th there is another problem where should be placed this soji, whether in that male or female or how should they be uh, classified. So, in short, Your Honor, we are not prepared and as I have said, since there are more questions than, than answers, uh, it may not serve the very purpose of uh, substantive law, uh, uh, especially substantive due process in the sense that it will serve the general welfare. And uh, aside from the uh, end point of general welfare, the means employed may not be reasonably necessary so as that uh, it may be oppressive to the, uh, to the uh, institution or people concerned. Okay, thank you. Now, briefly, uh, Justice Rosario, your view. Uh, uh, what is the implication uh, of this? I, I guess it's high time that um, we pass a law that will uh, um, prohibit your honor uh, discrimination yeah. against uh, individuals on account of their, uh, of their uh, gender expression or identity, your honor, in terms of um, Allowing them uh, 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 in terms of um, um, education, your honor, um, employment, uh, public health, your honor, and other services, your honor. Uh, in, in addition to that, your honor, um, I beg to disagree with the observation made by uh, Justice Lopez um, um, on the ground that um, I really believe that. Uh, there is um, a substantial distinction, Your Honor, between members of the so-called third sex or the lesbians and gays and non-lesbians, Your Honor. So, uh, I guess there will be no violation of the equal protection uh, clause uh, guaranteed uh, by the Constitution, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Justice Diva Ampam? Your Honor, uh, given the considerable oppositors of that bill. Once the president will sign that, many will challenge the constitutionality of such a law before the Supreme Court. So in the end, it's the Supreme Court which will uh, finally rule whether it is constitutional or unconstitutional. Justice Battle? The certification that the matter is urgent or honor would uh, speed up the discussion in the House of Representatives and in the Senate on whether or not the bill that would uh, put an end to what they call discriminatory acts committed against uh, the LGBT plus uh, community would be uh, addressed. And so that would be addressed also to the collective uh, wisdom of uh, Congress, Your Honor. Thank you. What is the doctrine of intergenerational responsibility as recognized by the Supreme Court in the landmark case of Oposa versus uh, Factoran? Yes, uh, Justice Dimampao, you are looking. You are looking at me. You know yes, the answer. Sir. 
there's a landmark case which uh, recognizes future generations to file a suit before the court. You, you agree with uh, you. Justice Di Mampau, Justice uh, Lopez? Your Honor, because uh, uh, this remind me of that song, Kalikasan, Mm -hmm. Ano na ang mangyayari kung di nating alagaan ang ating uh, 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 we will not, uh, something like if we will not uh, take care of our environment, what will happen to our children and children? And this, of course, involves intergeneration. And uh, even the Constitution already recognized this uh, ecological uh, health and as well as the uh, preservation of our environment. Okay. Justice Bato. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Ordinarily, the uh, minors does not have any legal standing before the court. Mm -hmm. But uh, applying that principle, they have the standing because it would affect them, affect not only the present, but also the future uh, minors. And so they are also entitled to a healthy environment. And so they have the legal standing now to file uh, or institute that kind of action. Uh, as decided by the, sim by the Supreme Court in the case of uh, the POSA. Justice Rosario. Your, Your Honor, I, I totally agree with Justice uh, Dima Ampao. Uh, he appears to be uh, so confident and certain with his answer, Your Honor. Now, what is uh, the doctrine of processual presumption? Justice Bato, I won't look, uh, I won't ask uh, Justice Diva Ambo first. <laughs> Justice Bato. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, that's the doctrine uh, to be applied uh, in cases uh, filed before the, uh, the court when the foreign law has not been uh, presented before the court. Then, following that uh, principle, it is uh, considered that the foreign law is the same as the Philippine uh, law. You agree with Justice Bato, Justice uh, Rosario? Yes, Your Honor, but I would tend to qualify, Your Honor. I would like to add something. Go ahead. Only in the absence of uh, evidence uh, to the contrary, Your Honor. Okay, how about you, Justice Lopez? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, in case of a foreign law, like for instance, in the matter of succession, uh, property rights, uh, in the absence uh, that will involve a foreign uh, foreigner, in the absence of any specific law that will be presented, then it will be presumed that it is the same as the Philippine law. You agree with them, uh, Justice Di Mampau? Your Honor, uh, it's not only confined to Philippine law. This is what the doctrine says. Mm -hmm. the, the foreign law shall be presumed exactly the same as the law of the forum in case the proponent uh, fails to prove the existence of that foreign law. Okay. My last question. Briefly, huh? briefly. Give me a good reason why my vote sh should go to you. I'll start with uh, Justice Lopez first. This is something discretionary on your part, <laughs> Your Honor. And uh, it will not be... Uh, 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 I would say uh, you would be purely objective, Your Honor, and you have all the documents from which you will base your judgment. As I've said a while ago... But I need to know something from you. Uh, all right. Uh, Is it because of your sincer sincerity or your truthfulness? Just g give me a good reason. All of us here, Your Honor, uh, are uh, sincere. They are all uh, competent. They 
are all uh, the, uh, have the necessary integrity and uh, uh, on my part your honor I can say that uh, I can ascertain my sincerity industry as well as my uh, integrity and probity and uh, under oath that is what I will tell you uh, it is beyond what you may expect but to me I have those uh, uh, subjective as well as objective qualities required for a magistrate before the Supreme Court Justice Rosario Your Honor I, I fully uh, subscribe uh, to the precept, legal precept, that justice delayed is justice denied, Your Honor. So you can expect, Your Honor, to once appointed uh, uh, to do everything uh, within my power, Your Honor, to address the problem of uh, cases uh, like to unclog the docket of the court, Your Honor. Justice Lima and Powell. With all humility, Your Honor, I possess the qualifications set forth under the Constitution. I have proven competence, integrity, probity, and independence. Specifically, I can bring to the court my integrity. Besides, Your Honor, uh, in the light of the erroneous decisions of the Supreme Court on Sharia as Muslim, I can help the court enrich Sharia jurisprudence given that Decisions of this uh, High Court of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region Muslim Mindanao are appealable to the Supreme Court. If there will be no representative from the from our Muslims brothers and sisters, uh, that erroneous decisions will continue. That uh, precisely uh, the main reason why it. Uh, emboldens me to apply again. Now let us hear uh, from some, somebody from uh, Negros Oriental, Justice Bato. Thank you, Your Honor. I started my uh, government service in the uh, Supreme Court in the office of the Chief Attorney in 1991. Thereafter, after almost six years, uh, I was appointed uh, MTC judge of uh, Imus Cavite. In 1997, I was appointed RTC judge uh, Branch 30, Dumaguete City. In uh, 2004, I was appointed uh, Associate Justice of the uh, Court of Appeals. So, Your Honor, I have 27 years of continuous dedicated service in the uh, judiciary. Also, Your Honor, aside from my uh, trial as a trial court judge, uh, aside from my experience, I'm also an academician. I used to handle uh, review uh, subjects like remedial law review in uh, Seliman University, in the uh, University of uh, Cebu, and in the Philippine Christian uh, University. So, I am uh, leaving my destiny in your own hands, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. That sums up my rounds of questioning. Uh, good luck to all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Judge Monteverde. The next uh, one who will ask questions will be Judge Ilao, but because he asks difficult questions, uh, we will have a break for five minutes.
Are you ready already? Okay. Ready for Judge Sheila. Okay. Judge Sheila. Yes, thank you. Uh, Justice Mendoza, Chair of this JVC. Good morning, uh, Your Honors. All right, I'll just have to trust a few questions, considering that this council had the uh, extensively and exhaustively interview, even for the previous uh, interviews. Yes, uh, Justice Bato. What is your reputation in the office? I think, Your Honor, I'm hardworking hard work. and focus on my uh, decision uh, to come up with a quality uh, decision, Your Honor. How would your superiors, colleagues, and subordinates describe you both positive and negative? Well, uh, insofar as my colleagues are honor, uh, I, I think they consider me uh, a, well, hardworking uh, justice. But then uh, perhaps also we cannot just uh, avoid uh, some uh, negative uh, comments in the sense that uh, one time I decided a case. It, uh, I reverse a decision of a division of the Court of Appeals. That case uh, was decided by a division. After they have decided the case, they inhibited themselves, and the case was rappled uh, to me. I totally reverse the decision of that uh, division, Your Honor. So perhaps they do not. Uh, they feel uh, bad about that uh, decision, so uh, I, I, what can I do? I have to perform my duty of uh, deciding that case in accordance with what I consider as the uh, best decision on the merits of that uh, particular case. And uh, how do you view the credibility of the Court of Appeals as a whole? Well, uh, I think, Your Honor, the feedback is positive that uh, in the Court of Appeals, uh, we are current in our uh, cases, meaning uh, we try our best to decide the cases within the uh, period provided for by the uh, Constitution, that is within a period of uh, 12 months, Your Honor. All right, uh, how do you view the credibility of the Supreme Court? Well, I consider the uh, Supreme Court, Your Honor, the, as a credible uh, institution because uh, despite the so many controversial uh, cases, Your Honor, we cannot uh, say that uh, their, credible, uh, their credibility is... Uh, affected adversely. We have to uh, consider the fact that uh, they are being, uh, or the members of the Supreme Court are also human uh, beings, and uh, human factor may have uh, affected their uh, uh, decision, Your Honor. And what then uh, are the novel reforms you're going to introduce, even when you're appointed to the Supreme Court, that no one had offered before. I think, Your Honor, we have to uh, change the, uh, or uh, I would uh, strictly advocate for the, uh, for the uh, deletion of that uh, practice uh, in the Supreme Court to consider the case uh, through Hock BC or it is applicable only to a particular case and that cannot be used as a precedent. I am advocating for that abolition, that practice, Your Honor, because the decision of the Supreme Court forms part of the uh, legal uh, system under the uh, civil court provision. So that uh, for have these uh, cases has no room. These decisions of the Supreme Court uh, has to be uh, applied in all cases when uh, you have the same facts, the same issues uh, involved. 
we would be creating a special class of persons or individual if uh, a particular case is applicable to a particular individual but not to all other uh, persons, Your Honor. And how would you see, how would we see these reforms running? Your if Honor? And, if and when you're appointed as a Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, uh, again, Your Honor, uh, how? Reforms running if you are going to be appointed in the Supreme Court? Well, I have to convince the uh, members, uh, Your Honor, of the, uh, the reason why we have to uh, abolish that uh, practice, Your Honor. What again is that practice? Is the uh, PROHAC VC rule, that the case is applicable only to a particular case. It could not be uh, cited as a precedent or invoked by other uh, persons or lawyers, Your Honor, uh, or applied by the uh, justices of the uh, lower courts. And uh, who do you look up to in the Supreme Court, past present? Uh, well, uh, Your Honor, Justice uh, Peralta, ju uh, Chief Justice Lucas uh, Bersamin. Uh. And who do you look down? <laughs> but may be considered uh, more or less uh, you dislike. Well, I may not <laughs> agree with their uh, decisions, Your Honor, in some aspect, but I, uh, I strongly believe that all the members of the court are competent and uh, they are uh, persons of integrity and probity, Your Honor. What changes uh, have you made in working with others to be more effective at work? Well, Your Honor, we must... Uh, to be effective, we must uh, always update ourselves with the uh, recent laws and uh, jurisprudence so that uh, cases would be decided uh, primarily on the uh, mer merits of the uh, case or honor. Have you read uh, the case of Balag versus Senate, GR number 234608, July 3, 2018? Uh, in particular, Your Honor, I cannot uh, remember. Uh, With respect to the period of imprisonment under the inherent power of contempt by the Senate during inquiries in aid of legislation. When should it last? Well, uh, it is uh, coterminous or co-extensive with the, uh, with the adjour final adjournment of the House of Representatives or the uh, Senate, Your Honor. All right, uh, what skill would you like to improve and what is your plan for doing so? Well, I would want to uh, be a uh, computer, uh, although I can uh, prepare decision in the computer, Your Honor, I would uh, try to uh, maximize the use of computer insofar as uh, so far as uh, the uh, research of uh, recent uh, jurisprudence is uh, concerned. Are you tech savvy? Are you a computer literate? Uh, partly, Your Honor, because I can uh, prepare decision directly in the uh, computer. Right, what have you done professionally that is not an experience you would want to repeat? Not to repeat, Your Honor. I could not think of uh, anything, Your Honor, uh, as of this uh, moment. And uh, what motivates you?
kindly uh, uh, repeat your motivate what? Uh, what motivates you? To? In your work. Well, uh, my motivation is that I render uh, and dispense justice to all the litigants, Your Honor, and uh, that I render quality uh, decision that I can uh, sleep uh, soundly, Your Honor. And uh, what frustrates you? Well, uh, Although it is uh, very seldom that uh, I am reversed by the uh, Supreme Court, Your Honor. All right. Uh, are there perceived uh, conflict between the issuances of the temporary restraining order and the implementation of the suspension, removal, or dismissal from the service? As so recommended by the Ombudsman, you've been involved allegedly in the issuances of a temporary restraining order during your stint at, uh, as Justice of the Court of Appeals in the Cebu or uh, in the, the case of Caliado, please. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The, the, the problem is that uh, you have decisions to the effect that the uh, order of uh, suspension is uh, immediately uh, executory and so uh, you have decisions of the Supreme Court to the effect that uh, the issuance of an injunction would not uh, even uh, stay the uh, implementation of a decision of the uh, ombudsman to suspend an employee whether uh, elected or uh, uh, of an elected uh, official your honor that is uh, clear but then the supreme court has ruled in the case of Carpio Morales versus Binay that it is also within the power of the uh, court of appeals to stop the uh, ombudsman from implementing the suspension of an elected uh, government uh, official. So that is a continuing problem insofar as suspension is concerned. It is also a problem insofar as the uh, suspension of an elected official is concerned if he is, uh, if there is a, say, or dismissal, suspension or dismissal on an elected uh, government official. As far as the elected government official is concerned, you have this uh, election and they are said to be representing their constituents. They are being elected. They are the choice of the people. And yet they cannot uh, perform their function because they are being suspended. And if it is a preventive suspension, if there is a grave abuse on the part of the uh, ombudsman, then uh, that, in effect, nullifies the uh, sovereign will of the uh, people. So there should be a check or balance on the part of the uh, suspension of government of an elected or even an appointed uh, government official. And that balance is uh, provided by the uh, Court of Appeals because when we issue a TRO or an injunction, we go into the merits of the uh, case. And if it appears that there is grave abuse of discretion or there is uh, the Ombudsman has no jurisdiction over the case because like in one case the Ombudsman referred the matter to the uh, to the Sagunian Palalawigan because what is involved is a mayor but then after the referral another complaint was filed involving the same uh, facts and uh, situation 
the ombudsman issued a uh, decision dismissing the uh, elected government official. So we have a rule that uh, the uh, although the ombudsman has concurrent jurisdiction with the Sangguniang Pangaluigan, but the moment they refer the case to the Sangguniang, then they should uh, no longer have the uh, jurisdiction to hear and decide that uh, case. So in that case, Your Honor, we nullify the decision of the uh, Ombudsman for lack of uh, jurisdiction. And we have even a recent decision of the Supreme Court to the effect that uh, if there is, uh, there is a reversal made by the, uh, in this case, by the Supreme Court, that reversal of a decision of the Ombudsman uh, dismissing a government official or employee should also be immediately uh, executory. I'm talking of the Bilaparte uh, case, Your Honor. All right, thank you. But, uh, all right, our uh, last question will be, if today were to be your last day on earth, how would you spend it? Well, I would uh, spend it with my family, Your Honor. Whose family? My only family. Oh, only family. Honor. So it's singular. Only one. Singular. All right. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, yes, Justice uh, Dimampau. Your Honor. Morning, Your Honor. Have you penned a decision that was contrary to your personal moral belief? No, Your Honor. If and when you're being confronted with such case, what will you do? I have to apply what the Supreme Court said, that as magistrate, uh, you must uh, dispense just, uh, justice in the light of established facts, the applicable law, and prevailing or existing jurisprudence. Do you recall the case of Estrada versus Escritor? If, if uh, the issue can be... Uh, I'll give you a hint. All right, what is the benevolent neutrality approach on the Constitution's yes, uh, religion, I, I now religion in clauses? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, it, it's about a clash between the power of the state to uh, regulate certain religious activity uh, and the right of religion, uh, freedom to religion, the free exercise of religious profession and worship. Uh, in that case, um, the uh, Supreme Court uh, ruled that uh, such religious uh, freedom can uh, be the subject of regulation if there is that compelling state interest, Your Honor. In the absence of the same, that freedom of religion, in the language of then Chief Justice Enrique Fernando, as a fundamental right is entitled to the highest priority and ample protection because among human rights, as it involves the relationship between the relationship of man with his creator. All right, uh, what is your takeaway from the ruling of the court? in Republic versus Sireno. The Supreme Court has spoken. So we must be guided by what the Supreme Court said in that case of uh, CFI versus Avilia, wherein the Supreme Court said uh, the Supreme Court by tradition, 
and in our system of judicial administration has the final word on what the law is. It is the final arbiter of every uh, justifiable, justifiable issue. Uh, in your opinion, uh, what are the issues plaguing the judiciary? And how is your addition to the Supreme Court going to address these issues? One, uh, there, is, there are decisions of the court which are conflicting. Uh, this uh, must be uh, settled to establish stability of judicial decisions. Uh, I firmly believe that the Supreme Court has the uh, trust and confidence of the people as the final arbiter of all issues. As the, fine, as the final, as the uh, final bulwark of democracy. And uh, how quickly will we see results from your appointment to the Supreme Court? It depends upon the uh, sound discretion of this council. Uh, if uh, these honorable members will nominate me again, rest assured, and eventually the president will appoint me, rest assured that I will take to heart what the oath of magistrate dictates, that is, to uh, administer justice fairly and equitably both to the poor and the rich, to the uh, weak and the strong, and to the lonely and well-connected. Of course, it also lies in the hands of the president, he being the appointed power. All right, uh, what one skill makes you the most qualified for this position? Integrity, Your Honor. Integrity. How have you embodied integrity in your entire life? I have maintained that, Your Honor, since I practiced law as uh, court attorney at the Court of Appeals, a senior state prosecutor at the Department of Justice, regional trial court, Mandaluyong City, and now Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, of the Court of Appeals. What excites you most about this position? Your Honor, it is the dream of every lawyer to reach the pinnacle of a career, and that is to reach the Supreme Court and on a personal note, I can contribute to the administration of justice in this country with my, with all humility, my wealth of knowledge and experience. And uh, how many times she had been nominated by this council? If I remember right, uh, I had to rectify what I have said in my previous interview, Rain, I said nine times that should have been eight times, but since I was nominated again by the council in the last uh, uh, shortlist, I was uh, shortlisted nine times, Your Honor. Nine times. So don't you think that... Uh Justice in the Supreme Court is not yours. 
for I, nine times being nominated yet you're not being appointed. I am an optimistic and positive person, Your Honor. Mm. Uh, I always uh, live my faith to Almighty God and God knows what is in my heart. I again apply my, because of my sincere desire to help the Supreme Court in the administration of justice, particularly uh, enriching Sharia jurisprudence. It is a cold hard fact that the Muslims in this country have been deprived of representation in the court for more than 25 years. And as a result of the same, there are, I'm sorry to say, with all due respect, erroneous decisions of the court on Sharia. To my personal view, this is an injustice to the Muslims in this country. We have this Sharia law as recognized by the Philippine government, previously under PD 1003, 1003. But it would seem that the provisions have not been correctly applied because there is no representative of the Muslims in the Supreme Court. And under the BARM law, uh, Article 10, uh, it is clear that the decisions of the High Court of the BARM are appealable to the Supreme Court. And if no representative, Your Honor, of the Muslims in the Supreme Court, very likely such injustice will continue. There may eventually be erroneous decisions of the court. Your Honor. Rete, how long did the Supreme Court have no Muslim in such body? Uh, Justice Bedin retired in 1995. He was the last Muslim associate justice of the Supreme Court. So more than 25 years, Your Honor. Would we make it a, a difference if you're going to be nominated and appointed in the Supreme Court? The lone Muslim? Yes, Mr. Your Honor. Again, this will give flesh to that state policy under Article 2, Section 22 of the Constitution. I quote, the state recognizes and promotes the rights of the indigenous cultural communities within the framework of national unity and development. I, close quote, I belong to that group of indigenous cultural community, a minority group in this country. All right. Uh, could you briefly explain something to me that is complicated but you know well. Anything, Your Honor? Yes, if there is any. Well, uh, with all, with all, with your, your, with your permission or uh, a case, a, uh, an issue on tax, taxation, Your Honor. Uh, Why dwell on tax? If that is your forte. And that, uh, that is quite complicated. The one that I have mentioned regarding mm -hmm. uh, that uh, rule on irrevocability. Because it would seem, with all due respect, that the members of the court could hardly discern uh, the application of such. But deep inside, with all humility, I know a view that will convince the court that indeed this is what the law says. I'm referring to Section 76 of the National Internal Revenue Code. Why do you say it's complicated? Do you know it? 
the, even the Supreme Court, Your Honor, uh, uh, could hardly grasp uh, the uh, intent of the law, which resulted in two conflicting decisions. But with all humility, I have my own view, having no taxation for 28 years, Your Honor. Why not uh, apply as a commissioner in the BIR? That is your uh, turf. That, that's taxation the, is just one uh, of my expertise. Your Honor. I also teach civil law, commercial law. And I have uh, knowledge about Sharia law. All right, thank you, Justice. Thank you, yes. Your Honor. Good morning, uh, Justice uh, Lopez. Good morning, Your Honor. Mm. What would you do differently if you knew no one would judge you? What would I do if nobody? Well, uh, I will pray, Your Honor. I will pray that uh, I will do something good, not only for the people, my family, but also to my country. Arata, uh, you know, also teaching uh, law subjects in schools. Yes, Your Honor. And uh, what did you learn in law school? Subjects that has proven or have proven to be the least useful. I did least useful, Your Honor. Oh, let me see. Uh, we took for granted the uh, subject of Roman law, Your Honor. But uh, lately, as we go on with the history of the law, the list that I considered is not important apparently is giving me a guidance as to the appropriate application of the law. The history of the law uh, will tell us how the law evolved and how it was violated and how it has also uh, given us an experience, especially in the uh, proper application in the modern times. Uh, it appears that my judgment uh, had deceived me or has betrayed me. And uh, it, is now, it is now that I realize that this subject, which I least expected, is also important in the guidance of my uh, uh, study of law, Your Honor. And uh, how could you use your position you are applying for to help law students learn only the useful subjects. You know, as I've said, uh, Roman law involves the history of the law, how it evolved, and how it was practiced, and how it was applied before. And again, at present, as we said, uh, our experience uh, is the best uh, tutor or teacher in, 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 in our application of the law. That is why we have this uh, also in our uh, jurisprudence, we have this uh, rule of stare decisis and uh, this uh, precedent of laws, Your Honor. I would consider that also uh, uh, teachings from the very beginning, especially the philosophy behind the application of the law, Your Honor. Arata, how do you handle a case in a bad mood or difficult situation? in a bad mood or a difficult situation. Normally, Your Honor, if I am in the bad mood, I do not, I do not decide. I will look forward to a time that I am in the better mood so that I could better dispense justice, Your Honor. Uh, and what will be the good mood for you? 
Well, Your Honor, at the time that I am uh, well rested and uh, just in the mo wake up in the morning where my mind is uh, fresh and I had enough sleep, that is the quality time that I have the opportunity to pray and uh, secure the guidance of the Lord as well as in practicing and uh, uh, recalling, not uh, actually, I could, easy, uh, I could recall the principles that I could have, I cannot remember when I am in bad mood, Your Honor. Is there any ritual that helps you calm down? I pray, Your Honor. You pray? Uh, we have, we, I adapt that uh, practice of bedans, Your Honor, ora et labora, Your Honor, that it is not enough that we work, work, and work, but we need also a spiritual guide. We pray because uh, I believe that uh, work and work uh, alone is meaningless without prayer. And prayer alone, on the other hand, will be uh, fruitless, Your Honor. So there should be a uh, combination of both prayers and work, Your Honor. So what's one thing you wish you had done at this point in your life and why haven't you done it yet? Mm, maybe, uh, Your Honor, uh, uh, in our life, Your Honor, we always want something and uh, natural persons would always uh, like to do more than what we already have. It is but natural what uh, many, this is, a, this is a something which I, uh, I myself, we uh, experience. We always uh, uh, motivate ourselves to do more. We do not get contented uh, of what we have if we can see that we can still do something better so that in our um, uh, pursuit of uh, uh, life, whether in the public service, in our work, or whatever, even the family, if we have something more that we can do, then uh, it is my attitude to seek what more that I can do and I can contribute. I do not uh, end on some point that if I see that there is a room for improvement, Your Honor. Rata, have you read the case of Saval versus Duterte? GR number 238467 was penned by Justice Del Castillo. Del Castillo. February 12, 2019. It involves the petitioners who, are in, who were engaged in the business of tourism in Boracay. Tourism in Boracay. Which uh, uh, sought to nullify Proclamation Number 475. It's closing down the Boracay. What was the ruling of the court? The court, uh, Your Honor, uh, sustained the validity of that uh, order of the uh, chief executive because uh, it. Uh, is for the general welfare and in furtherance for the um, environmental protection as well as in accordance with the constitution on these uh, issues of uh, ecological development, Your Honor. And what was precisely bottom line in the exercise? The, the President, Your Honor, if I may uh, recall, uh, uh, suspended the operation in Boracay and uh, it was challenged whether he has that authority to suspend the operation in Boracay uh, for a certain period of time and uh, not only because of uh, his uh, police power that it was sustained uh, but because of his uh, constitutional duty as I have said to uh, protect the environment Your Honor. Thank you, Justice Lopez. Yes, uh, now uh, Justice Ricky, your turn, please. Hi, How are morning. you, my friend? <laughs> I'm okay, Your Honor. And what do you want to be remembered for? Ice cream? I wonder. 
Uh, I guess you're, you're fond of eating ice cream then. <laughs> on account of uh, the, the taking into account the nature of my job, Your Honor, I guess it should be my sense of uh, impartiality, Your Honor. Impartiality. And my commitment, Your Honor, to dispose of uh, you know decide the case uh, without fear or favor, Your Honor. What is the greatest obstacle you are facing right now? Uh, Your Honor, um, unlike in the trial court where I came from, I was RTC judge in Makati, uh, where I practically, on my own alone, uh, on my own, Your Honor, uh, run the show or call the shots, Your Honor, uh, this is a collegiate court, sir. So, uh, um, it is a quite, a collective uh, decision, Your Honor. So the instances uh, or the possibility of uh, uh, a member of your division um, uh, opposing your uh, findings in a particular case is uh, not far, not, not far-fetched, Your Honor. So sometimes I feel uh, frustrated, Your Honor, that uh, I'm not able, to, Your Honor, to uh, how do you call this? Um, not really persuade my colleagues, but uh, to be able to come out with the decisions, which, in my opinion, Your Honor, is uh, correct, Your Honor. And what was the happiest period of your life? Your, your Honor, um, when I was first nominated by this Honorable Council, Your Honor. And I hope this, it will not be the last, Your Honor. And if you're not going to be nominated again, it's going to be your saddest period of your life. Right? I will keep on trying, Your Honor, until keep I'm able to convince this body that I am I deserve Your Honor a nomination. And what one skill that you have that others will not have? Uh, Your Honor, um, from the time that I assumed uh, my judicial office, Your Honor, um, I have, um, Your Honor, um, uh, faithfully uh, subscribed, Your Honor, to the um, to the rules on judicial ethics, Your Honor, because everything is already there. Um, even the principle that the administration of justice should be fair, effective, and speedy, Your Honor. So, um, I treat the, the canon of judicial ethics as my Bible. I, as much as possible, try to, uh, try to um, make it, uh, uh, what do you call this, Your Honor, um, to know it by heart, Your Honor and adapt it as a way of life if possible. Uh, after all, Your Honor, um, judicial ethics, Your Honor, is a, 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 a branch of moral uh, science that uh, deals with the proper conduct and behavior uh, that should be observed by all judges and magistrates in the handling and disposition of cases assigned to them, Your Honor. And which behavior, Your Honor, uh, should be um, um, uh, should manifest uh, impartiality, independence, competence, and integrity on the part of uh, the judge or magistrate, which incidentally, Your Honor, is the um, visible representation of the law. And uh, what is the greatest injustice you've lived through? In my profession, uh, professionally, Your Honor. Yes, not even professionally. Had you been unprofessional? You know, you know, I, 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 um, um, it was my impression that the question is uh, pertains to my personal life and not my. Um, right now, I cannot recall of any instance that I. I feel that there was um, injustice committed, uh, Your Honor. I'm sorry. All right, what are the three roles of a magistrate in relation to those who appear before 
is Hercourt. Well, there is a decided case, Your Honor, that uh, a judge must be, um, Your Honor, um, courteous, uh, attentive, and uh, patient, Your Honor, uh, to all persons uh, who come to his uh, court, especially Your Honor, um, in dealing with new uh, white or inexperienced lawyers, Your Honor. Uh, they just should be patient enough to understand, Your Honor, the situation of these uh, new lawyers. Arat, uh, do you agree with the ruling of the court in Republic versus Manalo? Oh, uh, yes, the Your Honor, it's only fair, Your Honor. That is the interpretation of Article 26 of the Family Code. Oh, yes, Your Honor, uh, precisely, um, it is the intention of the court, the Supreme Court, Your Honor, uh, if, they, if it were to uh, the subject is otherwise to avoid or prevent a situation where um, a Filipino or Filipina for that matter would cons legally be considered as married to her foreigner husband when that husband your honor has already secured a you know a decree of divorce from from from, from his country so fair is fair your honor It was just, okay. Yes, please. Please continue. Sorry. So I guess, Your Honor, it was just an interpretation of uh, the law where, um, you know, um, the, uh, where, um, um, uh, you know, some, there's a school of thought that uh, it should be uh, literally construed, uh, the provision, the rules of court that uh, the divorce uh, proceedings or the decree, the, the proceedings must be uh, initiated by the husband, the foreigner husband in the country where divorce is allowed, meaning it should be uh, filed at the instance of the husband so that if the wife, the Filipino wife, uh, has no participation whatsoever, then the law would not apply to her, meaning to say that. Uh, uh, she cannot invoke the divorce decree in asking the local courts uh, to consider her qualified to get married again, Your Honor. How are decisions reached in the Supreme Court? Well, um, the, uh, under the Constitution, which um, was also incorporated in the internal rules of the High the Supreme Court. Uh, it's either a decision is reached either by an unbank or, or in division. Uh, there are uh, cases enumerated, enumerated by the Constitution and reiterated in the IRCA, which can only be handled um, and decided, deliberated upon by the Supreme Court as a body. Um, meaning unbank, such as, uh, you know, the constitutionality of, uh, you know, uh, laws or treaties, Your Honor, and uh, a, 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 a case of first impression, meaning to say that it is the first time that such an usually complicated issue um, that the Supreme Court will uh, pass upon, Your Honor, in such other cases. Now, um, there is also one um, important point uh, that we have to, con to, to consider, Your Honor. Only those members, Your Honor, who have uh, participated, Your Honor, in the uh, discussion or deliberation and voted their own can uh, uh, be allowed to vote, Your Honor, so that if uh, the the required majority is not attained after a discussion or deliberation. They will have to do it again, Your Honor. Now, if it results in the same uh, uh, situation, meaning even um, as provided in the IRCA, if it is like um, you know an administrative uh, or, or rather uh, a criminal uh, case. Uh, it should be, uh, you know, there's, there is, uh, it should be um, uh, decided in favor of uh, uh, the accused, Your Honor. 
um, something like that, Your Honor. All right, thank you. That was my last question. And, uh, thank you for your time and effort, and good luck again. Thank you, Your Honor. Justices. Thank you very much, Judge Ilaw. Justice Tiha. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Your Honors. All of you have been my colleagues in the Court of Appeals, where I stayed for 14 years. All of you have served for more than 10 years. How come you don't have white hairs? Is the work in the Court of Appeals lighter than in the Supreme Court? Must be. Somebody said that wanting to join the Supreme Court is like wanting to get married. So be careful what you wish for. You like easy questions? Just the easy questions. Uh, Justice Bato, who, who is the... There are 15 justices in the Supreme Court in the Philippines. Who is the 16th justice of the Supreme Court? I could not uh, imagine of a... 16th Justice, Your Honor, under the present setup of Make the a Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court, there are nine justices, but they refer to somebody as the 10th Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, in the Philippines, who is the 16th Justice of the Supreme Court? Your Honor, I could not. Uh, it's the law clerk. The law clerk of the court of which you were once uh, a member of the Supreme Court is the 16th Justice of the Supreme Court because the law clerk reads the decision. He researches on jurisprudence. He submits a report to the justice and he discusses with the other law clerks. So he's referred to as the 16th Justice. Although the soldier claims to be the 16th justice, he does not belong to the judicial department. Okay. Justice Di Mampao, why do you think the Supreme Court is considered as the weakest branch of the government? Uh, may I be allowed to uh, cite the uh, federal make your answer as brief as possible because we don't have enough time of uh, Alexander uh, uh, is um, Hamilton I recall that your honor is the authority on that uh, dictum that the Supreme Court is the weakest and he explained if I remember right he in his uh, 78 federal note, uh, it is the weakest because it has neither the purse nor the sword. It uh, acts that, that's through okay, that's okay. Uh, Justice, uh, I get the point. Justice Lopez, why do you think the Supreme Court is labeled as the most dangerous branch of government? Because, Your Honor, it is the last bulwark of justice. So what makes it dangerous? It, is it dangerous? It is dangerous branch. because uh, uh, what, if ever there is any question of constitutionality, invalidity of the law, uh, it is the, the, the Supreme Court will finally decide what is the law and it's how it should be applied. dangerous in that sense? Your Honor, please. It is dangerous in that sense? Uh, it is dangerous because whatever that 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 that, that uh, decision of the Supreme Court is what will eventually be the law of the land. If it is contrary to what the uh, legislature wanted it to be, then so be it. 
because it can strike down yes your honor executive action it can nullify exactly your honor. laws of congress precisely and it your can honor. chart the direction of the country that so is in that correct. sense it is, that is correct, the most dangerous that is, that is my you, belief justice your honor. lopez justice uh, rosario who presides in the supreme court and bank It is the Chief Justice, uh, Your Honor. Who is the recording secretary in the Supreme Court and Bank? Your Honor, um, in my recollection of my, my reading of the Supreme Court IRCA, the and Bank is supposed to be private, confidential, Your Honor, so that no person that, is allowed in the right. court answer to the wrong question. The question is, who is the recording secretary of the Supreme Court and bank? I, I, I suppose it's the, um, uh, the, the clerk of court, or overall clerk of court. The clerk of court attends the Supreme Court and bank? Are you sure about that? Um, Nobody is allowed to enter the yeah, yeah, yes, Your Honor. Supreme uh, Court and bank except the members of the court. Who records the actions taken by the end bank? Who is the recording secretary? Uh, is it in the, the chief uh, justice uh, is yes, the sir. recording secretary. All right. I have no doubt that all of you are eminently qualified. You are more than qualified. But the question is, are you ready to join the Supreme Court? Justice Bato, are you a leader or a follower? I am a uh, follower, Your Honor. The Supreme Court does not need <laughs> followers. Justice Dimampau, are you a passionate person or a moderate person? I am uh, known as a passionate person. Uh, my students uh, uh, consider me observed how I lecture, and that uh, I earn that reputation. As Will you passion. follow Supreme Court decisions at all times? Yes, Your Honor, because that's the final arbiter of all issues. So when you are in the Supreme Court, you will blindly follow all existing Supreme Court decisions? Your you Honor, will not attempt to revisit? or review those decisions? No, you know, I, I really have to apply the uh, philosophy of activism as uh, it is, uh, in effect, embodied in the uh, expanded definition of judicial power under Article 8, Section 1, Paragraph 2. Justice uh, Lopez, are you an extrovert? or an introvert person? Mm, I would say, Your Honor, uh, eclectic. It is a combination of uh, introvert and extrovert because there are times that uh, I want to be alone and there are times also that I want to be in the public. Are you a mere observer or a fence sitter? Definitely, the Supreme Court does not need definitely Your Honor, I am not a mere observer because uh, uh, I need also to assert uh, some of my knowledge and authority in the uh, determination and dispensation of justice, Your Honor. Justice Ricky, are you assertive or accommodating? Uh, it would uh, uh, depend, uh, Your Honor. Um, if it, is, uh, it involves... Uh, you know, um, the, the, the manner um, I perform my duties and functions as... Uh, Remember that there are 15 members of the court. They will not spend time or waste their time assuaging your ego or massaging your ego. So, if I'm you be forceful or reticent? You know, if I'm 100% uh, certain or sure about my stand, I will assert your honor. I will try to justify my the position I've taken on any issue, Your Honor, that is uh, presented to the court for discussion or deliberation, Your Honor. Your, your credentials are worth nothing in the Supreme Court. It's your skills 
and attitude that is important. Yes, you do not go to the Supreme Court to help the court. The court does not need your help, except to decide the cases. Justice Bato, are you humble and understanding or courteous and inquisitive? All of the above, Your Honor. Justice uh, Japs, are you a believer or a doubter? Believer, Your Honor. Are you easily swayed or influenced no. by your, the other members of the court? No, Your Honor. I always uh, consider the law as my guide. I can never be wrong as long as I uphold the supremacy of the Constitution. Justice Mario, what are reflections? Uh, Your Honor, uh, reflections are your thoughts and belief. They uh, more or less uh, depict your personality. Either Is it a literary writing? No, Your Honor. It's not, Your Honor. Uh, it's not really literary. The reflections in the concept of deliberations inside the court, what are they? The concept of deliberation, Your Honor, is uh, collegiality, Your Honor, that uh, reflections are no one, nobody has... Reflections are dissents, dissenting y opinions. Yes, Your Honor. Justice Ricky, what uh, is an advisory in the Supreme Court? Well, advisory um, um, in contemplation of uh, maybe the Constitution, Your Honor, uh, which says that uh, um, the court... Uh, the court uh, will uh, um, limit the the matters that can be or the issues that can be um, uh, included in the oral arguments or honor is usually done after uh, the court has it's the court agenda to be followed in during oral oh, yes, Your Honor. arguments justice mon what do you mean by door to door your honor please what do you mean by door to door i'm not talking of the pizza delivery, door to door in the court. What do you mean by that? Sorry, Your Honor. Uh, I have not encountered that. Uh, when decisions are circulated, it is brought to each justice and they call that door to door in a sealed envelope. Is that allowed in the Court of Appeals? We also practice uh, that to some extent, Your Honor, because uh, our decision is uh, also placed inside an envelope delivered to the other uh, justices. And these are also closed uh, envelopes, Your Honor, but not as uh, strictly followed by the uh, Supreme Court. But then in AMLA cases, it is uh, inside the bag, and there is a... Uh, Key and delivered also to the uh, members of the uh, division, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Justice Job. Yes, Your Honor. What is a Gilbert? Come again, Your Honor. What is a Gilbert? You're supposed to know those things before you join the Supreme Court. I. Uh Read. Is it a person? A Gilbert? Gilbert. I, I read the internal rules of the Supreme Court. Uh, unfortunately, I found no such word, Your Honor. Gilbert is the type of paper used by the court for the final copies of the signed resolutions. They call it a Gilbert. Thank you, Your Honor, for right. that. Uh, but knowledge. it has run out of uh, copy, I think. They now use a brand known as Conqueror, but they still refer it as Gilbert. All right. Thank you for that. And uh, a few questions. Uh, Justice Mario, what is an agenda folder? I would say the, uh, the subject matter that is to be taken off. Agenda in folder. Yes, you know, it is. It is that that is the folder where the 
subject matter that will be taken up in the session, Your Honor. This is an agenda folder, okay? This is the folder you bring to the end bank yes, or the Honor. division subject matter deliberations. Justice Ricky, uh, what are the contents of an agenda folder? Uh, Your Honor, uh, the the what what are included in the agenda of the court during deliberations, either in bank or division? Uh, these are the um, uh, uh, cases that are scheduled for uh, uh, deliberation, Your Honor. Judicial matters. Okay, is it exclusively restricted to? Cases, judicial matters discussed during and bank and division. Can you venture other it, matters? It might, uh, I, I, uh, Your Honor, uh, it might include Your Honor uh, uh, non-judicial administrative matters. Uh, what do you mean by ad admin complaint? Yes, sir, uh, administrative matters, Your Honor, um, such as ad um, all other uh, complain against officials and employees. Oh yes, yes, Your Honor, it is non-judicial. Uh, yeah. Justice Bato, what do you mean by bar matter? Uh, that has uh, something to do with uh, matters involving uh, lawyers uh, with pending cases with the uh, Supreme Court. And Justice Chap, what do you mean by administrative matter as differentiated from admin complaint? It's uh, a matter uh, that is within the realm of the administrative functions of the court. That will be my last uh, question. You ready <laughs> to go to the Supreme Court? <laughs> All right, thank you and good luck. Thank you very much, Justice Diham. Justices, uh, I know you prepared for this interview. You read the internal rules, I presume, the Constitution, and the latest jurisprudence. You are prepared on the Constitution. Uh, I'll start with Justice Bato. Do you know Section 30, Article 6 of the Constitution. Uh, sorry, Your Honor, I could not uh, specifically uh, uh, remember right. the uh, it's all right. article. Uh, this will give you an idea. You're familiar with this because you are all justices of the Court of Appeals. In the case of Martin versus NLRC, the Supreme Court decreed that decisions of the NLRC should first pass the Court of Appeals through a petition for review before it can be elevated to the Supreme Court under Rule 45. In answer to the clamor for speedy disposition of labor cases, bills were filed in Congress enabling litigants or allowing litigants to appeal the decision of the NLRC which acted as an appellate body over the decisions of the labor arbiter directly to the Supreme Court. Can this be legislated? Your Honor, please. The uh, matter of uh, pleadings, practice, uh, and procedure are within the exclusive authority of the uh, Supreme Court. In other words, the uh, Congress cannot uh, legislate on the uh, matter. The uh, matter of jurisdiction could be legislated, but the matter of uh, procedure is within the exclusive uh, domain of the uh, Supreme Court, Your Honor. Justice Dimampo. I have to be guided, Your Honor, 
with the constitutional provision regarding the power of Congress. Yes. And that is, the Congress shall have the power to prescribe and define an apportioned jurisdiction, of course, but not deprive the Supreme Court of its uh, jurisdiction over matters enumerated in Section 5. So as long as it will not violate that, Congress has the power to pass such legislation. That's the constitutional limitation, guidelines, parameter that must always be uh, uh, taken into consideration by Congress when it passes a law regarding such jurisdiction. Can it lessen the jurisdiction of the, the court, Supreme Court? Cannot. It's very clear therein it may not deprive the Supreme Court of its jurisdiction over matters mentioned in Section 5, and there are six items there, Your Honor. Was it provided that uh, Congress cannot lessen the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court? Yes, sir. Is it uh, specifically may not, provided? May not deprive the Supreme Court. How about of in its the problem at hand? In the problem I yeah, yeah, here, I, it, uh, regarding I, the uh, uh, legislation or a bill uh, allowing litigants who lost in before the NLRC to directly go to the Supreme Court. That's, uh, that's your answer. Constitutional, okay. because it does not violate that constitutional limitation or parameter. Justice Lopez. Your Honours, please. Uh, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court is well defined under the Constitution. And uh, any modification uh, of its jurisdiction cannot be done by legislation. Otherwise, it will be uh, a violation of the Constitution. Uh, and uh, this is specifically uh, since it is specifically uh, provided in the uh, Constitution uh, without it cons its consent, without its consent, that uh, jurisdiction cannot be increased or modified, Your Honor. Justice uh, I don't think uh, Congress, Your Honor, can take action on the... Um, it, it, can the pass a bill. it can pass a, such a bill. Uh, uh, my my uh, answer is in the negative, uh, Your it. Honor, because uh, to my mind, Your Honor, it can be uh, construed, Your Honor, as a uh, violation of, uh, uh, of 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 the uh, the check and balance uh, principle or uh, the separation of powers among the three uh, major branches of government. Uh, the to do so, Your Honor, uh, would have the effect of Your Honor of uh, uh, affecting or changing the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, which under the Constitution uh, the legislative cannot uh, venture into. Section 30, Article 6 reads, Congress may not, depri may not deprive the Supreme Court of its jurisdiction mandated by the Constitution, nor may it increase the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court without its consent. Who among you are correct? I will go to the another point. Labor also, because uh, labor cases go to you. Uh, involuntary arbitration can one file a motion for reconsideration justice bato if i if my memory would serve me right your honor uh, that is uh, not allowed 
Okay, Justice uh, Paul. No, Your Honor, it's final because the parties agreed to submit the case to that arbitration, so they are bound by such consent. Justice Lopez. Oh. There, there may be a prohibition on the filing of motion for reconsideration, but uh, for purposes of equity, I think uh, it may be allowed, Your Honor. This Rosario. I, I share the same uh, view uh, taken by Justice Lopez, Your Honor. And just in response, short response, or a uh, comment on the answer uh, given by Justice uh, Jobs. Oh, that the parties voluntarily agreed to this. It's in, in, I, it's in voluntary uh, arbitration. So you have not. It's like uh, you sorry? have not received uh, cases before you regarding voluntary arbitration. I, I do not recall your. I can't recall your honor having uh, come across uh, a case uh, involving voluntary arbitration. Your honor, labor case. Parties are allowed uh, voluntary. Ah. Uh, uh, Allowed to file a motion for reconsideration. The Justice Bato, within what period? I could uh, not remember the period, you know, but it is less than uh, 15 uh, days. I think it's uh, 10 days. Period uh, within which you go to the Court of Appeals? I think it's only 15 days, Your Honor, by a petition for uh, certiorari under Rule 65 for yes. grave abuse of uh, discretion amounting to lack of jurisdiction. It's either 15 or 30 days, Your Honor. I'm not very sure of the period now. Justice Di Mampau, 15 days, Your Honor. Motion for reconsideration. What is the period? I think it's 15 days, 15 the days. Uh, uniform rule on And then going to the Court of Appeals, how many days? 15, what is the days, period? Your Honor, 15 uh, days. And the rule 43, because it involved the uh, decisions of judicial, judicial agencies. Justice Lopez? 15 days, Your Honor. 15 days. Uh, appeal or uh, both? Yes, both. Justice Rosario? I, I, yes, I, I believe that rule 43. Um, squarely applies in the case of a quasi-judicial uh, uh, body like uh, the department, so the NLS. So this 15 days? Uh, I, 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 yes, Your Honor. the motion for reconsideration? So it's also the same, uh, 15, 15 days, uh, Court of Appeals. It says here in the decision of the Supreme Court that they can file a motion for reconsideration within 10 days. And from uh, after a resolution, you can question it to the Court of Appeals within 15 days. Okay. Justice Dimam Pao? Yes, Your Honor. You describe yourself as a believer. Yes, Your Honor. Right? But you do not believe in all Supreme Court decisions? Uh, as a uh, lawyer, uh, I have to respect the decisions of the Supreme Court uh, taking cue from uh, what the Supreme Court said. I recall now the case of Albert uh, versus C.Y. of Manila in 1968 of encode the Supreme Court by tradition. In our judicial system of administration has the last word on what the law is and is the final arbiter of all issues. As lawyers, we all respect the decision of the Supreme Court. Yes, Your Honor. And earlier, you mentioned the Supreme Court committed erroneous decisions. What are those? With all humility, they have memorized this crown number, Your Honor. On, the se on August 16, 1991, 
which will which you can find in volume 200 of his craft page 652 the supreme court committed with all due respect a blunder regarding its ruling on that highest evidence in sharia we call that as yamin a swearing before the holy quran the supreme court declared it as unconstitutional but that's and highest evidence in Sharia. And the other one is a case involving custody of Muslim child. Custody. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Rendered on December 7, 2001. It is found in volume 371 of Skara, page 642. You can ask any Sharia lawyer. They are one is saying the decision of the court is erroneous because it does not confirm, it's not consistent with settled Sharia okay. and jurisprudence. I decided when I was in the Supreme Court, I decided case. involving the jurisdiction of the Sharia District Court and the Sharia Circuit Court, they also him. on custody. Was it erroneous? No, no, Your Honor. I read that decision because you have <laughs> consulted, as I read your decision, two Sharia experts. So I did not make a That's uh, with, within. It's uh, a correct decision. Is in accordance with settled Sharia and jurisprudence. Mm. So, that should I vote for you? <laughs> I pray to God that uh, you will help me achieve my dream, Supreme Court Justice. Thank you, Honor. Justice Lopez, you have read plenty of Supreme Court decisions. In your personal, do you agree with all of them? Of course, uh, Your Honor, uh, I also have my reservations uh, personally. and uh, But in general, Your Honor, I agree because uh, rightly or wrongly, Your Honor, they are the law of the land. So, as I have answered uh, Justice Tiham a while ago, that is the risk of the uh, decisions or the uh, of that of the Supreme Court because whether it is right or whether it is wrong that is the final interpretation of the law and we must implement the only uh, remedy there is perhaps to change the law and it we will submit or that change to the, the justices to the, no you're so wrong. you want to join them <laughs> to let the uh, legislative do its work to amend or perhaps uh, 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 pass another law that will uh, be in accordance with the uh, with the decision of the Supreme Court. If you will be in the Supreme Court, what will you do with those cases? Hopefully, Your Honor, please. Uh, just like what we do in the classroom, we discuss the general law, we discuss the decision, whether it is in accordance with the law or not, and if it is not in uh, accordance, we try to uh, settle why, you know, settle and explain if there is any conflicting uh, application. And the most difficult part is when there are two different and conflicting decisions. So what we always do is to reconcile these two conflicting decisions. And once we uh, fail to uh, reconcile these uh, uh, two decisions, the thing that we do is to declare it as according to Justice Bato, pro hoc vice. Have you read the case? You're a criminal law professor, right? Of Romilim. 
what is your comment? Everyone in the court, not, yeah, Your Honor. We will not take it against you if you express your personal Everyone opinion. in the Court of Appeals has already read uh, that uh, Romy Lim. But uh, the concept of Section 21 originally, originally the concept that we learned is that it is only uh, credibility and not the admissibility which is involved. Supreme Court decisions uh, subsequently upon the enactment of 9165 all congruently says that it is credibility and not admissibility. However, subsequent rulings of the Supreme Court seems to vary from that uh, very intention or, or uh, very meaning of Section 21 to the extent that it is now uh, gearing towards uh, an application that this is this matter of Section 21 will affect the admissibility. And in fact, uh, IRR was explained that if there is no justification, that, that, that uh, matter of uh, apprehension and the apprehension of the uh, offender may be rendered void. So, here comes Romy Lim. Because of this development in the interpretation of the law, Romy Lim apparently, apparently made it an element, an element so that if it is not complied with, the case will be either uh, on preliminary investigation, the, 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 there will be a further preliminary investigation, or if ever it is filed, then the court will have the option not to issue a warrant of arrest and or even dismiss the case. Now, uh, it has been explained that Section 21 is not a ground for acquittal, but it is a ground for dismissal. To me, at that stage, true, it is a ground for dismissal. But once it is filed, it is a ground for acquittal. Apparently, the, the, the effect is the same. It, it is the same because non-compliance will eventually cause the dismissal or acquittal of the offender. So there is something that we should clarify here. What really is the intent of the legislature in the enactment of 9165, particularly Section 21? Is it, uh, is it merely administrative that will not affect the admissibility or it will cause the... Uh, uh, non-admissibility of the evidence. Those are this the things that so far, Your Honor, had been uh, the uh, effect of this Section 21. Justice Rosario, what was the latest uh, amendment regarding Section 21? And amendment introduced by Congress regarding Section 21. Uh, if Your Honor, please, can I just have a, a clue or a hint uh, as to the subject matter of the le legislation? You know? 21. Of the uh, section 21, Your Honor. Yes, yes. Uh, regarding the same. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, what, was I, the late, what was the latest? Uh, I think uh, the amendment uh, what was has something to do with. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was introduced. What provision was introduced? Uh, it, has, it has something to do with um, the uh, number of uh, uh, witnesses uh, who are supposed to, whose, whose presence is required in in case of uh, the the the, 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 the was in the earlier provision. I, what I'm was sorry, introduced? Yeah. What was the amendment? Do you know? I'm at uh, Your Honor, I'm not that um, that quite that familiar with the that issue, Your Honor. That non-compliance is not fatal. Have you read that provision? Non-compliance, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, I, 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 I think so, Your Honor. You think but so? But this is the case of... Uh, the, the case of... Um, um, 
Okay. I'm actually... Justice uh, Lopez, was that introduced, that provision, it's not fatal? Well, it was embodied uh, in uh, Republic Act 10640 and the IRR in uh, implementing rules or regulation stating that it is not fatal if there is a justification for non-compliance. Okay. So that apparently it, absent of that uh, justification, it may become fatal. <laughs> yes. You heard that, uh, Justice Rosario? Uh, yes, yes, Your uh, Honor, uh, the need for If uh, the an enforcement officer failed to explain the failure to comply the with the compliance, yes, Your Honor. Is that fatal? The non-compliance, Your Honor. Uh, at what stage or during the preliminary investigation? Uh, failure to explain its non-compliance with the provisions or requirements of Section 21. Uh, yes, is that, Your Honor. Um, is fatal. Uh, as, in, as it could possibly result in the dismissal of the drug case, Your Honor. No, is it fatal? Uh, you just oh, yes, yes, sir. yes, I think so. Yes, it's, is uh, it an element of the crime? Not, not, not an element of the crime, but... But why uh, will you dismiss it? It's not in the information. There is no explanation. If I will judge, uh, if I will dismiss the case, Your Honor. Yes. The, the failure of uh, the police officers, Your Honor, to include in their affidavit uh, the failure in ability to, the, to, the, the inability to uh, explain, Your Honor, their non-compliance with the requirement on the two requirements of uh, inventory and your honor um your honor um, um i will um 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 allow your honor the uh, uh the prosecution uh to uh, adjust uh, anyway, to, to uh, you are a former prosecutor yes i was your honor in Kansas city what should be your remedy If I were uh, the p police filing the case, Your Honor. I heard the prosecutor. What should you be your remedy? What is the best remedy in that situation? The enforcement officers failed to explain. I, um, uh, uh, Your Honor, um, I will um, Your Honor, uh, present the police officers, Your Honor. Uh, who failed to, uh, you know, um, co right. comply with that requirement and explain in court uh, their uh, the reason and why they they failed to do so, Your Honor, which is better than uh, they beat. You mentioned earlier that uh, the legal and judicial ethics, your Bible, correct? Did I hear you right? Uh, I, I, yes, it's very yes, uh, uh, I important because I believe, Your Honor, that not, uh, no judicial system can work without uh, judicial ethics, Your Honor. And, and legal ethics, okay. It's a jumper to contract. Uh, I beg uh, your pardon, Your Honor. Jumper to contract. That is Chap covered by ethics, legal ethics. Jumper to? Yes. <laughs> I never heard your honor. I thought it was your Bible. <laughs> Justice Bato. Your honor, please. What is a chamber to contract? I, I think it is uh, a practice, your honor, uh, among uh, lawyers uh, that is uh, considered as uh, unethical. Specifically, what is very general unethic? Uh, uh, I think, Your Honor, it is uh, a contract wherein uh, it is uh, stated that uh, the, uh, the you will be encountering this in the Supreme Court. The property uh, subject matter of litigation would be uh, uh, used as a uh, payment for the services of a lawyer, Your Honor. Your understanding. Yes, Justice Your Honor, that is my understanding. Justice Lopez. Uh, 
uh, partially your honor uh, that is the concept of a champertus contract where the uh, uh, payment of attorney's fees will be dependent upon the uh, result of the case your honor so it becomes a contingent uh, um, matter so that the uh, lawyer will become personally interested with the outcome of the case Justice De Mampo. I agree with uh, Justice Lopez, Your Honor. You have time to research the uh, bill. In a case, an action directly brought in the regional trial court was filed to demand conveyance of property sold upon forfeiture for non-payment of a tax assessment. The respondent filed a motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. Justice Rosario, do you agree? For non, uh, the, the, the action prays for the reconveyance of property sold upon for feature of non-payment of a tax assessment. Your Honor, if I will sustain the motion to dismiss. Suppose the, the issue reaches the Supreme Court and you will be the justice, the ponente. How will you decide? Or what will you recommend to your colleagues? Uh, I, I think I will uh, recommend the denial of uh, the motion to dismiss uh, for lack of uh, jurisdiction. Yeah. Deny the motion for lack of jurisdiction? For, no, 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 I was... Uh, just uh, trying to seek clarification on the question if the uh, motion for reconsideration was appointed or triggered by the... Uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, I'll make it clear it was uh, denied by the regional trial court. Now the issue reached the Supreme Court. What will be your decision? Um, I, will, I, I think I will have to... Uh, sustain your honor uh, the sustain the dismissal the, yes the, the ruling of the uh, the trial court your honor justice lopez i think uh, i will reverse the rtc your honor because this is within the jurisdiction of the rtc a matter of this is uh, in this involved so recognizance which is within the general jurisdiction of the, the rtc, RTC. Like, so yes your honor so you have the same answer you will sustain what was your answer, uh, uh, Justice Rosario? That was different, Your Honor. Uh, regarding Justice... Uh, your Honor, I will sustain the jurisdiction of the RTC. Ah, you will sustain. The same? Uh, Justice Rosario? Uh, yeah, I what was uh, your answer? To, Your Honor, affirm the ruling of the trial court, Your Honor. You will also sustain. It, the, it's it's basically the same, the, I suppose, uh, Your Honor. You I, I will think so. also, I mean to say... Uh, you will not also grant the motion for dismissal or Justice Bato. With due respect, Your Honor, with let me the, clarify something. Do you uh, agree with them? Uh, with due respect, Your Honor, uh, it's not very clear to me okay. the, the, the facts. Oh, and uh, it is a tax delinquency sale that is being assailed before the... Uh, but the prayer was for reconveyance of property. Reconveyance of property sold upon forfeiture of non-payment of a tax assessment. So it was dismissed by the RTC because of what ground, Your Honor? Uh, that the motion to dismiss was denied by the RTC, but claiming that it has what, jurisdiction. What is the ground of the motion for to dismiss your own? Lack of jurisdiction. Lack of jurisdiction? Yes. Does the RTC have jurisdiction? 
when it comes to tax delinquency, say in your honor, uh, the taxpayer has to exhaust administrative uh, remedies before the uh, treasurer's office, which uh, conducted the uh, auction uh, sale of the property that is the subject matter of the tax delinquency uh, sale. So that uh, if there is a uh, denial there, you have to uh, go to the uh, RTC, Regional Trial Court. And the, uh, but then there is a requirement that you have to pay also the, the, the amount before the court would uh, take uh, cognizance of the case. So that uh, the RTC there has uh, jurisdiction. In fact, the decision of the RTC in a tax delinquency sale is appealable to the Court of Tax uh, Appeals. Justice, the Mampau, this is your I, I, area of expertise. I maintain it's not dismissible, Your Honor. Uh, the the RTC has jurisdiction. has jurisdiction. And the Court, the RTC is correct in denying such motion to dismiss. Uh, it's a simple case of non-payment of taxes. Uh, so it's the RTC. Yes, uh, the court uh, correctly ruled in denying such motion to dismiss. The Chief Justice will be voting. He is the opponent here. According to the Chief Justice, the RTC has no jurisdiction. We submit your order. <laughs> Okay, uh, you are with the Court of Appeals, you know the case of uh, against the, this, uh, the dismissal of the Deputy Ombudsman. Are you aware of that? The Port Lozon, military or yes, not? Uh, Attorney, uh, Justice uh, uh, Lopez, does, this, does the office of the president, does it have jurisdiction in, over the deputy? In that case of uh, Gonzalez, your honor. Uh, I'm not yet. It's because in the case of Gonzalez, yes. the court ruled that it has no jurisdiction. But in the later case of Casibiro, the Supreme Court sustained the dismissal or the, uh, the sentence over Casimiro regarding the ghost deliveries in the Philippine Air Force. The question now is, what is your view on this? What is your opinion? Who has jurisdiction? Does the Ombudsman have jurisdiction? Or the, oh, I mean to say, the Office of the President have jurisdiction over the Deputy Ombudsman? The original case, Your Honor, of uh, Gonzalez, there is a dissenting opinion and the majority opinion ruled that the president has no jurisdiction over the person of the deputy ombudsman and implying the uh, independence of the ombudsman which is supposedly exercised by the uh, ombudsman and not the deputy ombudsman. The consideration here, uh, Your Honor, is that uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the issue is whether or not the immunity or the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, yes, immunity of uh, Ombudsman because he is uh, subject to impeachment uh, and whether it could be also applied to the Deputy Ombudsman. And subsequently, Your Honor, that, uh, that, that, that uh, was abandoned in the sense that uh, uh, because of the uh, 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 power of the president who appointed 
the de deputy ombudsman, uh, it, wa he it has also the implied power now to remove such a deputy ombudsman and uh, the immunity of that uh, ombudsman is not uh, applicable to that of the uh, uh, deputy ombudsman, Your Honor. Justice uh, Rosario. Agree with Justice Lopez. Uh, um, yes, sir, Honor, but um, I would just like to add by way of uh, uh, clarification that uh, the uh, legal action that the power to appoint um, necessarily includes the power to dismiss your honor should not be made to apply to Uh, constitution uh, impeach, impeachable uh, officers, Your Honor. Do you agree? With whom do you agree? Your Honor, please. Oh, do you agree with them? Well, the... Uh, matter of the removal of a deputy ombudsman is uh, provided by a provision also of the law creating the ombudsman. It is uh, expressly uh, stated that the president has the authority to remove the uh, deputy ombudsman programs provided for the removal of the ombudsman and there must be a due process that must be followed. Now that provision of law has been uh, interpreted by the Supreme Court in bank when they decided the case of uh, Gonzalez, Your Honor. And the first de decision of the Supreme Court penned by uh, Justice uh, Bernabe is to the effect that uh, that is a uh, that the, the president has the authority and that provision is uh, constitutional because the president has the uh, power to appoint the deputy ombudsman and it is also expressly provided in the constitu in the, the law itself that it has the power to remove the uh, deputy ombudsman. So that uh, although the uh, matter of removing an elected or an appointed official is also lodged in the uh, ombudsman, but then we follow the following the principle of concurrent jurisdiction. Then, uh, if uh, the case is filed with the office of the uh, president, then the office of the president has the authority and power to remove an ombudsman. Uh, however, uh, in a, in another decision of the court, on a motion for reconsideration. The, the court said that uh, that authority to remove is unconstitutional because of uh, the, the fact that uh, it would encroach on the uh, independence of the ombudsman as uh, provided in the uh, Constitution. What is the effect of the decision in the Casimir case? Well, I'm not uh, very familiar with the case, Your Honor, but then if a, that is that an in-bank uh, in decision, Both. so if uh, it applied the uh, decision of justice beyond that, then uh, again, 
they 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 apply the uh, the in the, or they consider the independence of the ombudsman and that if the authority of the president uh, to remove is uh, sustained then that would mean based on that decision an encroachment on the uh, independence of the uh, ombudsman your honor he is a president the uh, deputy ombudsman is a presidential appointee Yes, Your Honor. It is appointed by the President upon, I think, nomination also, the also. Judicial and Bar Council. He cannot remove the Ombudsman? Oh, he has the power to remove? Well, the... the uh, power to appoint, but does he, he have the power yes, to remove? Yes, Your Honor. Power to appoint carries with it the power to remove as a statement of, gen of a general rule unless expressly provided otherwise by an express provisions of law. Like, for instance, the uh, justices of the uh, Supreme Court uh, and uh, Court of Appeals and the lower court judges are appointed by the uh, president. But then the president cannot remove the uh, justices of the Supreme Court because they, are on, they can be removed only by... Uh, impeachment. And for lower court judges and for justices of the uh, Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court has the authority to remove uh, erring uh, judges and justices, Your Honor, by uh, express provisions also. Justice the view of Justice Lopez, Your Honor. still hanging there are two conflicting decisions so if you reach the Supreme Court you'll be one of those who will review them mm. uh, this will be the last subject uh, it's already late Okay, listen to everybody. Basic is in constitutional litigation is the requirement for an actual case or controversy. Supposing a petition was filed by a group of students questioning a law, creating an administrative body that accredits, supervises, and regulates law schools on the ground that it should be the Supreme Court that should supervise law schools. Do you think the requirement of an actual case or controversy is satisfied? Justice Lopez? Can you repeat? Can you repeat? Oh. Okay. Basic in constitutional litigation is the requirement for an actual case or controversy. Supposing a petition was filed by a group of students questioning a law creating an administrative body that accredits, supervises, and regulates law schools on the ground that it should be the Supreme Court that should supervise law schools. I will give you a hint. This is about the field set which was decided yesterday. <laughs> or do you think the requirement of an actual case or controversy was satisfied? Based from my readings, Your Honor, it seems that there is no actual case of controversy yet, Your Honor, such that uh, there is no injured uh, party or party which is threatened to be injured, and this would be highly hypothetical, Your Honor, and uh, there is no compliance with that uh, requisite of uh, ripeness, and uh, uh, it is subject to controversy. Justice Rosario? I, I think uh, it, is, it is not, I would not consider it uh, premature, you know. In other words, uh, mm -hmm. it is something, you know, that uh, the court can, 
you know, can, can entertain your honor. Um, there is um, the, there is a um, an issue that a, a justiciable issue that uh, would uh, warrant um, a corresponding disposition on the part of the court, considering that uh, this body, uh, which is the subject of the petition by this group of students. Oh, has been requiring already the, the, the law students or, or, um, or uh, 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 to, to take this uh, exam, Your Honor. The yeah. Yeah, yes, Your Honor. So that uh, it would, uh, if um, it is not authority to do so, Your Honor, uh, I think uh, the students would have uh, a legitimate cause of action or standing because they are unduly, you know, burdened by the need to take this exam, Your Honor. When after all, uh, it is something that uh, can be done away with, uh, given the lack of authority of the, uh, this pleb or the 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 I forgot the name of the. Um, Yes, Your Honor, that is supposed to administer these exams, Your Honor. So it becomes an additional burden. To that extent, they are being damaged, and I guess the, the, it's only. If, there uh, is an actual controversy. I would consider it to be uh, yes. actionable, Your Honor. No, the, the, on the issue whether or not there is an actual case or controversy. Ah, yung ba? I guess uh, no, 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 no. Uh, there's none yet, Your Honor. Oh, no. so Premature the, also? Uh, yes, no, if there is no, uh, you know, the, the Supreme Court will only take action if there is a, an actual uh, justiciable uh, controversy, co controversy, Your Honor. Uh, Justice Dimampau. I humbly maintain that uh, that requisite on the actual case or co controversy is one thing. It uh, involves no assertion of rights and conflicting views. Therefore, it's not ripe for judicial determination of the case. Justice Bato. I understand that a law was created, Your Honor, or uh, a law was uh, passed creating the. Uh, Admin administrative before, body. And then the lab uh, administered the uh, field set uh, to test uh, the students enrolling in all law schools because, in the Philippines. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor, because ev every legislative act passed by uh, Congress could be subject to a uh, challenge before the uh, Supreme Court on the ground that uh, on constitutional uh, issues, Your Honor. So that uh, the matter of actual uh, controversy may be dispensed with because it is a procedural uh, requirement that may be relaxed by the uh, Supreme Court if only to decide a uh, novel issue or a matter of public interest or matter of transcendental uh, importance. The co court ruled that there is an allegation that the law infringes upon the court's rulemaking powers. So there is an actual uh, case or controversy because uh, LEB has already uh, administered the field set. Okay. Supposing a law was passed requiring law schools to admit only those students who obtained a general weighted average of 80% in their pre-law course, is this law constitutional? Justice Lopez. Uh, is that an actual case, Ron? Did yesterday. It was decided yesterday. 
Uh, maybe you will act on the motion for reconsideration. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I hope, Your Honor, but I will not bind myself <laughs> to that effect, Your Honor. Uh, requiring an 80 percent uh, on the uh, on that it, it is a requirement uh, for one to admission in the law schools for admission to the uh, applying the test your honor the in the end and means I don't think uh, there is no relationship of the end and means to uh, put a threshold grade uh, which is over and above the required grade for passing what is your view it is is it constitutional so uh, applying or this uh, due process uh, due process substantively your honor uh, there may be a, an infirmity in that uh, provision that uh, provide a very uh, uh, high uh, grade for purposes of admission to the College of Law. Justice de Maampau. I humbly maintain there is a clash of academic freedom on the right of the students to enter the law school. So? It is, and that is covered by due process that will prevail over that. Is it constitutional or unconstitutional? I maintain it's unconstitutional. Unconstitutional. Ato, do you agree? With whom do you agree? <laughs> we have the same, Your Honor. We have the same. Uh, the, the reasoning. With agree? Your Honor, uh, we have such thing as uh, academic uh, freedom of uh, institutions. That is the... Uh, right also of uh, educational uh, or the right uh, of the school to set reasonable uh, requirements for the admission of uh, students. Now, uh, by putting a ceiling on whom to admit or not to admit, I think that is within the uh, academic uh, freedom of the school, Your Honor. It was the lab, lab, which administered the exam, admission test, the lab for all schools in the Philippines. Yes, sir, they can uh, adapt the, the result the as a reasonable uh, uh -huh. condition for the admission. So what is your final uh, conclusion with respect to the constitutionality, issue of constitutionality of that law? As long as there is a uh, reasonable uh, classification, and I think there is a reasonable uh, classification between those who are 80 and above and those who are uh, below the uh, threshold, Your Honor. As long as it is applied to all persons belonging to the same class, then... Uh, that would not violate the equal protection clause of the Constitution. Thank you. So, in your view, it is constitutional and not violative of the school's academic freedom of the law schools? If that is an imposition, Your Honor, from the plebe, then uh, that may infringe into the uh, right of the school to determine for themselves the uh, reasonable uh, reasonable uh, standards in the admission of uh, students who would be enrolled in their uh, school your honor you are now changing your answer I, I, uh, with your respect, earlier, Your Honor, I think... Uh, earlier, you discussed about equal protection clause. Now, we discuss, we are discussing about academic freedom. You have different conclusions based on different constitutional provisions. What is your final answer? Well, the... Uh Anyway, we, we do not, uh, we, we, all of us have not read the original decision. Uh, that's my view, Your Honor. The academic uh, freedom is uh, 
to be uh, to be followed, Your Honor, because that is a uh, also a constitutional. Uh, so you will is unconstitutional. Uh, requiring the uh, if that is an imposition coming from the uh, Lep, another Lep, Lep. Uh, agency of the the government, your honor. Thank you, your honor. Uh, Rosario, yes, it is unconstitutional on two grounds. Do I'm you sorry. teach law? No, I don't. Yeah. No. Well. The three are professors of law. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with them? Uh, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my stand is that uh, it is unconstitutional on two grounds. First, Your Honor, um, the, the classification is not valid, Your Honor, because there's really no, substan in my, uh, to my mind, no substantial distinction uh, between uh, uh, students, Your Honor, who got a grade of... 80, Your Honor, and, they, and those no. students who fail to do so, Tell distinction. Uh, that, that distinction is my position, Your Honor, and in fact, um, there would be a, a violation, Your Honor, of the equality clause uh, under the Constitution. What test did you apply? The uh, Whatever test, Your Honor, whether it's so intermediate or uh, it rational or uh, strict interpret, uh, scrutiny, Your Honor, you do not pass, Your Honor. Okay. And second, Your Honor, I, I believe that there could there could be uh, there there is a, there it is possible that there is an encroachment of uh, encroachment of uh, the prerogative of the Supreme Court. The matter of uh, fixing the uh, the, the rules and regulation regarding admission is something that is within the exclusive competence of province of the Supreme Court under the Constitution. So it should be tra the lab should be transferred to the Supreme Court. It's now I, I, under the chair. No. Um, the you know, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to respond to the question whether ah. that is ah. unconstitutional or not the requirement yes. uh, oh, the law the passage of a law that would require students to get a grade you of said un unconstitutional oh yes yes no, that's my point and but but you added something that it should be under the Supreme Court the lab should be under the Supreme oh, Court. it is already under the Supreme Court your honor the lab oh, do you agree Justice Lopez it's an independent body. <laughs> under, under what? Uh, this is a of the government commission on higher education. No. Uh, oh. Professor or uh, justice, the Mampao. Under the supervision of the Supreme Chad Court. or Supreme Court. Yes. Okay. Justice Bato, Professor Bato. Same question, Your Honor. Yes, yes. Or with whom do you agree? Well, I think it's an independent body, Your Honor. Okay. This Lopez is correct. <laughs> Thank you very much. Those are my last questions. We have no more time. <laughs> may be hungry. <laughs> okay. Your excuse. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, honorable members of the Court of Appeals. We do wish you the best of luck. The public interview will resume at 2 o'clock.